shall we give the Lord a big hand of triumph? Amen. Hallelujah. This month shall be indeed your month of marching forward. You never know stagnation again. You never suffer frustration again. Redeemed for the top must top. You have no business in the valley. You have no business in the valley. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Rest up with Christ and meet with him. Heavenly place is far above. You have no business in the valley. All you need is to know how to get your way out of the place. You have no business in the valley. Zero business in the valley. I knew there's a place for every believer on top, and he showed me that. 1984, I was 30 years old. I was very old. <laughs> My God, I, I saw it. I embraced it. I began to learn the way up. So you see, if you understand uh, success secrets, you understand success strategies, you don't understand strategies, you understand systems. <laughs> Amen. I think I should write a uh, success code. <laughs> <laughs> no guesswork. Yes, sir. Come on now. No guesswork. You know, when you are very outstanding, so you say it's a high flyer. Mm. It's about flight. Oh, it's success. So they're in flying colors. It's flying. No plane toes another in the air. Man, son, to go up, you have to generate the relevant power, grand power, to take off in the air. No airplane toes another in the air. Have you seen one before? No, sir. No. That sense of plane is not working, just <laughs> tie rope. And then the plane took off. It's only trust that can tell themselves. No. No high flyer flies on Roman empowerment. No. No. Success cannot be inherited. No. Wake up. Abraham gave Isaac all that he had. But he never succeeded on it. He had to dig the ground. He had to plant the seed. He dug the feed. He dug. He said, no way. I'm going to get through. His breakthrough was not on his inheritance. Genesis 25, verse 5, he gave him all that he has. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 to 14, he sowed in the land. He dug and dug, they kept digging it until he became the envy of the Philistines. You can't succeed on somebody says inheritance. Yes, you can't win a race running with another man's leg. Yes, you better get up. Get up! There is no lineage of success. Everybody walks his way to succeed. No lineage. No lineage of success. There is no lineage of success. I don't care what you pack ready for your children. That's not equal to success. No. I told my old man, when you die, whatever belongs to me, give it to the others. I had an understanding of it. It's no guesswork. I was 25 years old when I said that. I know single plot of land in the world. <laughs> My God! Can't we close now, John? <laughs> That's the summary of this subject. Yes, I've given you the summary before we started the lecture. <laughs> you have to make your way. Was ferocious and command good success by your choice. So take responsibility. Now pray for yourself. Any prayer you want to pray. So I can't do the teaching that I have to do. Any prayer you feel you think you need to pray. <laughs> Amen. Abraham became successful after 75. Yes, 
He took responsibility. He went through it. Those, I mean, David became a hero at 17. My God. Anybody has his place if he chooses to. Everybody has his place if he chooses to. Lero tesi ale kradeneo preti ane zazaro. Ample krek tenero di ale shigalabala. Pray for yourself any prayer you think you need to pray. Pray for yourself any prayer you think you need to pray. It's a race. You must engage your own feet, your own legs, to win the race. Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Lord Jesus, let your light break forth this month across our churches worldwide. Amen. Let your light break forth this month to cause the star in each member of this church to get up into the sky. Amen. So let it be. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated, please. Amen. Glory to God. You don't give horses injection, lying down. They stand up to get injection. So the one you had is the injection of a horse. Amen. <laughs> to set you up in the race that you must win. The race that you must win. We have access to all things that life will ever demand through redemption, including success. He's given us all things that makes for life and godliness. Everybody has a good taste for success. Everybody, whether they tell you so or not. When your child excels in school, you have a broad smile. I just thank God. <laughs> when you enjoy breakthrough in business, it's always it is mine. Man, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Man. <laughs> Everybody has a very good taste for success. Anybody who says he doesn't like prosperity is a liar. He wants it. Amen. Amen. Between trekking to a cage from here and driving, <laughs> what will you choose for God's sake? Now, between Okada from here to Ikeja, which one will you choose? Between a car and Okada. Between flights from Lagos to Kaduna and driving, what do you choose? Flights. Why? It's good. <laughs> Everybody likes good things. Yes, sir. You don't think so? Yes, sir. They may make you feel that they are spiritual and they don't like it because they are going to heaven. <laughs> Abraham went to heaven as a super success. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So which heaven are you trying to go? But anyway, you have a choice to go either as Lazarus or as Abraham. The choice is clean. Amen. <laughs> Everybody has good taste for success, whether literate or illiterate, enlightened or dislightened. <laughs> Everybody has it. <laughs> Glory to God. But serving God is one great secret of living a lasting, enduring, generational order of success that will be talked about a thousand years after you are gone in Jesus' studies. The young lions may suffer want and hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. So we're going through the series captioned Exploring Success Virtues in Kingdom Stewardship. 
exploring what? Success virtues and kingdom stewardship. And I believe that this series will open up many destinies in the name of Jesus Christ. We're looking at two of those virtues that we connect with through kingdom stewardship. Serving God is a platform for experiencing divine presence. Divine presence. And divine presence is a game changer. And will make all the difference everywhere and under all circumstances. Jesus sent them two by two to every place where he himself will come. Luke chapter 10 and verse 1. He always goes with those on a mission for him. Luke 10, 1. In the great commission, Jesus said, go to the world and preach the gospel. Lo and with you always, even to the end of the age. So his presence is guaranteed everyone that is on his mission. So serving God and the interest of his kingdom guarantees you and I his presence, which is the game changer of life. God's presence is the game changer of life. God's presence. Jesus went about doing good and healing all them that were present because God was with them. Game changer. God was with Joseph and made everything that he did to prosper. God was with Joseph and he became the heir of Potiphar's house. God was with Joseph in the prison. He became his staff in the prison where he was an inmate. God's presence. Genesis 39, verse 5, verse 21 and 22. 3 to 5, 21 and 22. God's presence. John is God's game changer on the earth. It guarantees all weather breakthroughs. What do I call it? All, all weather, weather breakthroughs. breakthroughs. Not all things being equal. When all things are most unequal, it delivers. God's presence will deliver its mission. Mm? when all things are most unequal. When there's nothing equal of all, of all the factors. God's presence will always have his way. And being on the go for Jesus guarantees you and I his presence. That does not only guarantee the way forward, but destroys all opposing forces in the process. We live in a world of opposing forces. They shall gather together, but not by me. All that we gather together against you, you know, shall fall for your sake. Now, that is what the guarantee is that. That they are falling for your sake without your knowledge. You are on your bed and they are falling. His presence. His presence. His presence. His presence. It's not just saying this praise and all that stuff. I mean, uh, thank God for that, but being on the go. You can't be singing when you are sleeping. But when you're on the go for Jesus, he covers you while awake, while asleep. Amen. Amen. Get excited that your engagement is not a form of activity. It's your insurance against all satanic assaults. Amen. My engagement is my insurance against all satanic assaults. Without his presence, they could never get out of Egypt. 
but he was in their midst. The sea saw them and fled. What's going on? Tremble thou at, at the presence of God. God's presence causes your troublers to tremble. Get you through to where no man, no effort can get you through to. Everyone carrying God's presence enjoys supernatural breakthrough in his endeavors. Carrying God's presence. They vowed to destroy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But there was a presence with them. And the picture of the fourth man was like the Son of God. <laughs> that would not allow the fire to have effect on them. You know, your success can annoy a lot of people. But when you have his presence, the annoyance will lead to their destruction. Amen. My God. The mighty men who carried them in there, they were burned to death through the flames coming out of the furnace. Not, they were not inside the furnace. And this man had the fourth person with him in the furnace. Their body yielded, transformed by his presence. Amen. Even their heart and their garments. No smell of fire. By his presence. Every move those men to warn Daniel destroying the den of lion. But Michael has sent his angel and has preserved me. The lions were my toys. They were displaying to me in the night. His presence. His presence. That's why you need it. It's not just effort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, discipline. Or that. So that's okay. But when opposition rises, his presence is only your rescue. His presence is your only rescue. What do I call it? My only rescue. His presence is your only rescue. They brought somebody here from Harvard University, PhD. Mentor. Somebody just had, perhaps, that... He got a PhD from my father. He said, never, not in this world. Two arrow at him. If I don't have his presence, I'll be gone. Longest time. His presence is your insurance against all satanic assaults in your journey of success. Now, let me tell you this. Success is not your ambition. It's your birthright. What is it? It's not, it's not you are very ambitious. No, no. It's your birthright. Your birthright in redemption. It's your birthright in redemption. It's your birthright in redemption. It's your birthright in redemption. Isaac became great. The Philistines envied him. And we bred in us, Isaac, we are children of promise. So it's our heritage to be envied. But when envy generates to bitterness, then you find the wickedness of the wicked rising. The wickedness of the wicked rising. You need this present. So get on the go for Jesus and come to renew his presence with you. Renew his presence. I call them spiritual alternatives to man's quest for success. These are things. You, you, his presence will make the difference. How could you get a slave? My God. Ex-convict ascend the throne of the most civilized world of his days. No references. His presence. His presence. Brings men into favor, which makes high flyers. His presence. How does he do that? That will show me the path of life. And his ways are the highways of life. In thy presence. So his presence shows us the highways of life. 
One day I was in the car and then having a nice time in the Holy Ghost. And he said, my son, don't raise money. Raise men. And you have more money than you ever need for ministry. So I'm a very weak money this. I can't raise money. I got enough light not to be involved in it. My job is to raise men from the dunghill and make them sit in palaces by engaging the light of the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I love covenant and raise people. They are ever dedicated to the God who raised them. There's no method you can use in this world. To command respect in this church because of what you give. To greet you specially. It's not part of the package. By light. You are not giving for my sake. Even for your sake. Amen. Let God have respect for your offerings. It will change your status. Yes, sir. And keep changing it yes, as you keep doing it. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity as they keep serving him and their years in pleasures. You retire, it stops. I know we are in for the best of time this week. This month shall be one month we live to remember in your life. The good news is no bitterness of the wicked will tamper anymore with your destiny. Yeah. They went and said, even devils are subject to us in your name. My presence went with you. Now, I told you I was coming with you. I came with you. So the 17 they talked with joy. Ha, ha, ha. Even devils are subject to us in your name. He said, ah, ah, ah. What I told you, I'm sending you to where I will come. I'm coming there to meet you. Whatever can stand me, can stand you. I give to you power to rest up, to tell the servants and scriptures. No matter all the powers of the enemy, I'm not sure about enemies hurt you. We live in the wicked world of hearts. But from today, anyone embittered with your rising will go down for you finally. <laughs> They went forth, and God was walking with them, confirming the world in their lives with signs following. So his presence carries the supernatural waves of heaven along with it. You will be glad to hear this, that um, we have gone through now to about 54 of the new nations. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. We are taking steps now to deploy the takeoff. God, awesome God. Awesome God. His presence. His presence. His presence. And you know 75 is minimum. If you had that test, that prophetic word, minimum. So I said to them, you say, let's push to 100. Amen. Let's cover everywhere. Amen. His presence. Yes, when he releases his word and you go after it, his presence goes with you. And lift up your head, see gates, your everlasting doors be lifted up. The king of glory may come in. You don't. No gate can be shut against God. Therefore, from henceforth, no gate of favor shall ever be shut against you anymore. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. His presence is the covenant game changer of life. Keeps you above all weathers. Man, all weathers. Guarantees all weather breakthrough. All weather breakthrough. All weather breakthrough. And that's your new realm. Yeah. When you pass through the fire, it shall not kindle upon you and through the water because I am with you. The fire can burn you. The water can't swallow you up because I'm with you. 
Somebody's story is changing. Amen. Please understand that serving God secures his presence. Don't fake it. Make it. Make the choice for it. And God will supply the grace. Don't fake it. Make it. If you ask the past of darkness, what and what they must have done to stop this church, you'll be amazed why it has no effect except negative effect on them. That's your next level of story. Yes. For if God be for us, number two, serving God. It's our covenant access to the grace of God that makes great. We serve the God of all grace. First Peter 5.10, the God of all grace. His grace covers all leaders of life, including our endeavors, our business and careers. The God of all grace. Paul said, I'm what I am by the grace of God. Nobody can be anything more than the grace of God makes happen. I'm not even qualified to be called an apostle, but grace, 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 grace. The grace to serve covers all areas of our endeavors. The grace to serve. And that grace comes upon our choice to serve. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. You made the choice, it supplies the grace. You made the choice, it supplies the grace. While I was thanking God for his grace upon my life, that has kept my hands on the plow without ever considering looking back. Talk less of actually losing, looking back. He said, my son, you made the choice. I supply the grace. You made the choice. How long will you hold between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If it be bad, follow him. Don't stand in the middle of the road. It's not safe. Traffic is high. Traffic is high. Don't hang around in the middle of the road. If God be God, serve him. I've never checked on any other source of help in my life. You're talking about mighty men. I know the almighty. Hallelujah. And so what is mighty and almighty? They're not in the same class. You're talking of people in high levels. I know the most high. <laughs> and those who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. You talk about principality. I know the one who created him. <laughs> Amen. And the creature must always submit to the creator under any condition. Before Satan became Satan, he was Lucifer. Amen. <laughs> because he became the devil, the fountain of evil. But he was created. That's why he bows to the creator. They can't. Make your choice. And it supplies the great. Paul said, and woe is me if I preach not the gospel. He made his choice. God supplied the grace. Until the end of his time. He said, I've obtained help from God. I continue to this day. Help me is grace. Yes. Witnessing to both great and small. Acts 26 and verse 22. Acts 26 and verse 22. You are not, not chocolate fed, sir. Faith that is embedded in covenant responsibility. You make your choice. Paul made the choice. God supplied the grace. He said, now I'm ready to go. Henceforth, there's a crown waiting for me. 
not only for me, but those, all those who are walking towards his appearing. My God, the grace that covers available to all that are walking towards the return of the master by witnessing to both great and small. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. I made my choice before you were born. Amen. This tall man, before he was born, I made my choice. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Dangerous choice. Avowed choice. What abundance of grace is applied? Are you up for challenge? Oh, yeah. Plenty of challenges. The platform will be making of champions. Amen. Amen. I stopped counting when I counted 25 times. I was face to face with death. Your choice is more powerful than the, wicked, the most wicked devil we have. Your choice. Your choice to serve him brings you into favor with him, sir. Amen. Thou shalt arise, I have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yet the said time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the dust thereof. Therefore, the heathen shall fear. Fearful favor. Favor that makes your enemies to fear. Yes, That's what you're entering into. Amen. That makes your enemy to jitter. Yes, That's what you're entering into. Amen. That makes your troublers to start trembling. That's what you're entering into. Amen. Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15. Serving God provides access to grace. And grace also means divine favor. And divine favor is what makes high flyers, like we saw in the story of Joseph. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our choice today is what determines our lot tomorrow. Made the right choice today, it will show tomorrow. Well, to avoid this being just uh, theoretical, we have some outstanding biblical success stories from the platform of serving God. Abraham, he remembered his promise to his servant Abraham. Psalm 105, verse 42. That man grew till he had an army to himself. And the army was not one joking mega team. They could dare another nation's army and prevail against them. Genesis 14. He grew to become a business emperor. And many business emperors will rise here. Yeah. He was old and sickening in age, and God had blessed him in all things. There are people here, you'll be blessed throughout your days. Amen. You never tell the story of when you used to be blessed. Amen. At 80, you'll be a blessed man. Amen. At 100, you'll be a blessed man. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. amen. That kind of blessing I'm talking about, not the blessing that dwindles as you are aging. As you are aging, you start selling things to cope with survival. No. Abraham's blessings endure to generations that he's speaking today. That's your kind of blessing. Amen. That's your kind of breakthrough. Amen. That's your kind of blessing. Amen. That's your kind of breakthrough. And in thy seed shall all the families of you be blessed. That's what is happening. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And Jesus died to connect us with the blessings of Abraham. That will tell you how recognized that other blessing was. There was no abracadabra. There is no cutting of corners. Straight on. I'll not take a thing from you unless you say you make Abraham rich. That was the kind of man. Now, listen to this. Listen to this, and listen very carefully. 
Genesis chapter 18, verse 17 and 18. This is one word for all parents. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Saying that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For verse 19, please. I know him, come on now, that he will command his children. Lumotis cano pupulian de cano raye. I know that we, he will command his children. He won't pet them, sir. He will command them. This is the source of my help. Connect. He will command his children. Don't walk after him. Don't spoil your children, my people. Don't spoil your children. He will command his children. I know him. So generational blessings trade the commanding of our children. We have our own biologicals that serve in this ministry. Not one person has a dime above what is due. Not one day did I send one dime to any. Yet they send to me every month. We will command these children. Don't spoil them, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. He will command. He won't pet them. The children of nowadays, now are what? There's no nowadays Bible. There's no nowadays Bible. Yes. I know. May you know be nursing your adult sons and daughters. Amen. When they should be honoring you. May you not have them on your laps at the age of 50. I never chose any course for our children to read in school. Never. I know we command, so I give them materials of divine direction. I never go marry for any one of them, sir. This one you should marry. You better stop that funny thing. Carry adults on your back. You're robbing them from destiny. I'm glad you're all quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I didn't know when they wrote the exam. I'm writing exam every day, you know. <laughs> I'm also writing exam every day. No go now they are writing exam. Oh God, walk over them. <laughs> Allow them to live yes, sir. and command them to do the right. Yes, sir. This where parental failure comes. We don't command them. We just talk to them like Eli. The thing I hear about you is not good, though. Eh? <laughs> You see, what I hear about you. What you hear, what you know. He said, the iniquity of a son, which you know. <laughs> Not I had. Which you know. You're all quiet. <laughs> Start early. Before it becomes a dry fish situation. Ask those early folks who came to Covenant University. I mean, they'll be telling the encounter with me story for life. Forever. Many of them are sitting right here now. They'll be telling the story for you are not permitted to do what you like, but what is right. That's the law. You are not permitted to do what you like, but what is right. God says, you have somebody doing nonsense around you. Amen. I was driving one day and I saw some students, they were walking across on faculty and just passing and I, I stopped. Stop that! Do you know that's a faculty? I'm sorry, sorry for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> when I sack you from Covenant, Supreme Court can help you. 
Amen. It's an institution that has its own laws. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. And the law is domiciled in one chairman. <laughs> Whether it's standing or sitting, it's chair. And am I, am I not glad today to see a number of them flying? That's what it means to train a child in the way that it should go. And when it's grown old, it will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, verse 6. It will not depart from it. It works. Glory to God. By the time you see your son walking with people that looks like people on drugs, and you don't check him out, they will drug your house. Hi. <laughs> like they're drunk. I mean, the money. You say, Shekosi. Any problem? No, 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 not here. Not here. Go and do high somewhere else. Amen. That's how to train. That's how to command. Praise God. This man is restful. That woman is restful. Because we did what we should do the time we should do it. You will not fail. Well, today's our covenant day of um, career and business breakthrough. In these last days, supernatural breakthrough shall be the core identity of every child of God. Can I hear your amen? amen. Psalm 110, verse 1 to 3. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand and make the enemies their foes too. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing to line up with your instructions. In the day of your power, we shall precede the day of your coming. So supernatural breakthroughs that empowers believers to rule and reign in their various areas of endeavor will be the core identity of every believer in this last day. Psalm 87 shows us the way to it. His foundation is in His foundation is in his, uh, what is it? In the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Great things are spoken of you, O Zion. The last days, great things will be spoken about the church of Jesus. Because great men and women will rise. Some teenagers will scale strange heights. Not by, you know, all kinds of means that people are caught in corners. No. He said, the Almighty himself shall establish her. The Lord shall count when he shall write up the people. This man was born there. And that man was born there. All my springs are in the Uzziah. That's God's end time agenda for the church. And that's where you belong. Very quickly, seven keys to commanding supernatural breakthroughs in your various endeavors, your business, your careers, your trade, your market, whatever you call it. First, you must be born again. You say, why? Every day, every day, born again, born again. You must be born again. <laughs> God's family is a breakthrough family. Amen? And it is new birth that makes anyone a member of that family. You must be born again. to the breakthrough family of God. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints 
and of the household of God. It's a breakthrough family that we get enlisted only by salvation. When God becomes your father, and you are not entitled to the inheritance of the father, which among other things include your mountain top, but right. You are the light of the world. I see the set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Thank you, Jesus. You must be born again. Jesus says, you must. So I must say, you must. Not you may, you can. You must. Nothing we are saying now pertains to you until you are born again. Nothing. They don't look like me as told his oh, papa started again. You come here tomorrow, I will still tell you the same thing. You must be born again. <laughs> Matthew 10.10. 10. Now to tell you what it is. What that breakthrough is worth. Of all born of women. 11.11 11, please. 11.11. 11. There is none as great as John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. My God, greater than Daniel, my God, greater, greater than Joseph, greater than Isaac, greater, 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 greater than all the people listed in the Old Testament. He that is least in the kingdom, new arrivals, carries such potentials in him. You must be born. I've been saying this to people since 1970, so it's not that your look will now change it. You must be born again. Don't fake it. My father broke his entry to my town. He's not being born again. I was born inside the church. He's not being born again. None of those things count. I'm a reverend father. He's not being born again. I'm a reverend mother. He's not being born again. My father saw a vision before I was born. He's not being born again. Being born again is an actual surrender of your life to Jesus and who turns you to a new creature. And endows you with all the inheritance of the Father. Otherwise, every instruction will be a burden. You want to kill all day? Why? Why? Must you do all this before you can succeed? When you are born again, you will understand it. Said to them, unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, to them that are outside. These things are just mere stories. Finish, just pray for us. We are here to be prayed over. Number two, commit to seek him first, the kingdom of God. The advancement the enlargement, the well-being of the kingdom. And all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. I call it the jackpot of life. It impacts on all areas of life. All areas of life. One roadside mechanic I've spoken about his story several times. His biography is Mover of Men and Mountains. <laughs> uh, R.G. Toroni was a roadside mechanic and unschooled man but caught Matthew's at the tree and became his lifestyle. So God taught him engineering. Who taught him? Oh. All these things that others are dying to get, I will add them to you. Founded the school where he was teaching others what God taught him. Now, there's a university running uh, for many, many years, and they have several campuses today. R.G. Lutheran. He said when he died, he should put on his tomb, Matthew is at the tree. That's how to explode them business. Amen. Because you understand Abraham, you understand how Jilo <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> is there the book, his books are all over the place to read. Don't leave God behind. You never see the way to the front by leaving God behind. Don't ever make God a spear tire. Let him be before you. I have said the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. That's the song of David. I've said the Lord always before me. Because at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Set him before you. 
or you never see the way to the front. Awesome God. Hallelujah. Seek him first. The kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. It's not for pastors. I was not a pastor. And I wasn't thinking of being a pastor when I saw it. It's not being a pastor. Yes. Amen. Amen. I saw it five years before I had a calling. Wow. It has nothing to do with calling. Nothing, nothing. It's not to do with life. Don't leave God behind or you never see the way forward. Set him always before you. Let him be at the right hand. And you shall never be moved. He will confirm his word day in, day out in your life. I've said the Lord always before me because at my right hand I shall not be moved. Number three. Be committed to the covenant of tithing. Be committed to the covenant of tithing. Don't create struggles for yourself. It's the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and art no sorrow. Proverbs 10, 22. Be committed to the covenant of tithing. So you can connect to that blessing that there be no room enough to contain. Prove me now with your tithe. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, but there be not enough room to contain. My God. Be committed to the covenant of Titan as a lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Now, what by privilege and grace my covenant of Titan is today, if God gave me the figure before, I will not believe it. If he gave me the figure before. But I know where it began. Amen. There's no point in telling you. I've told you many, many times. I know where it began from. And I know the grace of consistency that kept changing it from face to face and face to face and face to face and face to face. And there are many people here like that who began from somewhere. Most of the time, below sea level, sea level. And then go to sea level. And then began to go sea level grade one, sea level two. And there are a thousand levels, or 2,000 levels. When you stop, it's where it stops. There's a man by the name J.C. Penning, the mother taught him about Titan. So he began Titan. And the time came, he felt the Titan was getting too much, too much. He started rationalizing, cutting it down. Let's assume, let's, let's this, uh, zoom. And, and the building was coming down, coming down, coming down, until he went down bankrupt. Oh, Jesus, what has happened to me? Remember where we are falling. So he began Titan back from the scratch. Where once bitten, a tithe is way back and went forward and he left for home with a network of shopping malls all across the U.S. and maybe around the world. Tithing is a mystery that causes your labor to be fruitful. Tithing is a mystery. I caught the mystery of personal tithing in 1982. You can be doing something without having a light of it. It doesn't work. I caught the mystery of corporate titan, 1987. That launched your church into one new world. Come on, say one new world. One new world. Uh, uh, I mean, show me how many organizations can be as disrelaxed as we are as a church building that enormous stuff.
the cost of the roof is a few times above the cost of this building. The cost of the roof, roof only. And everybody smiling, genuinely, truthfully, relaxingly. My God, I pour you out a blessing. And there have been no room enough, enough to receive them. You don't have to keep struggling. You don't have to keep struggling, sir. You don't have to keep struggling. In case you don't believe my testimony, believe the one of your church. You don't have to keep struggling. You don't have to keep struggling. Someone say anytime I mention corporate title, it gets very angry. <laughs> my job is to teach you the word of faith that will bear you out of all oppressions of the devil. We begin to oppression of ignorance. Ignorance is one of the worst aggressive oppressions in the world. He, he blocks our eyes so we cannot see the glorious gospel of Christ. He's the worst of all oppressions. That we hear what we benefit to and you say, no, never, never. I, I don't believe it. They say, come to church and go from cell to cell. No, no, I don't have to go to church. I have iPad. I have uh, all my devices. And it's bathing now as we are talking. He's in the bedroom now with his device. <laughs> After bathing, we'll go and cook. After cooking, he will eat. <laughs> Toss up, <is> finished. <laughs> he has iPad. Alone, he just on work party. Everybody was online during COVID-19. Many have not recovered. Around the world, I mean, our church by grace, made a good deal out of it. But many around the world, many, some 1,000 churches became 200. Just for those few times when they were on iPad <laughs> and on their devices, they got drained away. He moved from the message to pornography. Amen. He's on iPad. <laughs> And then he moved to crime and how to make fast money through uh, breaking technological rules. And it's in the service. Oh, yeah, now you can't make noise because CCU is there. <laughs> Amen. It's your turn for breakthroughs. Amen. Don't try to cut corners. It doesn't work. No short walk works in our walk with God. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. But I see business giants in their numbers rising from this place. You are one of them. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Number four, be committed to kingdom advancement sacrifices as may be prompted by the Holy Spirit. Kingdom advancement sacrifices. Your zone needs a building. You have the privilege of doing it. Do that. You are looking for land in your area and you have the privilege of Having one you can sow as a seed, sow it. There's a church going on in your village. You have the opportunity to build it. Go and build it. There's another one in the next village. You have more than one opportunity. Go and build the other one. You know, you are, you are, just, you are just excited about God and his agenda. Haggai chapter 3, I mean chapter 1, verse 3 to 13, clearly shows that heavens open on two camps, on tithing and on kingdom sacrifices. Those are the two ways to keep your heaven open. Tithing and kingdom sacrifices. J, JC, what is it? What's his name? Um, um, Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller, what, what's, was a tither from $7.05 to the billions that he walked in. It was the first American billionaire in history. He tied his way to that realm. 
He one time gave one forty million dollars. How much? One forty million dollars. I'm not there yet. Somebody has passed through that place before. Through the mystery of consistent tithing and kingdom sacrifices, one forty million dollars to the education fund of his church, not J.C. Penney University. No. So it's not only Abraham we're talking about. We're talking about contemporary issues. Now, talk about David Green, the greatest gospel benefactor, the Bible, I mean, the, the authors called it today. Yes. His entire business life is advancing the kingdom. Yes. And the business is just exploding and exploding and exploding and exploding. This thing works. Please connect, 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 connect. You won't find this in all those motivational things they are talking about in town. It's not there. But this one, a large number have proved it, many in this church that are here today. Amen. 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 You are the next. Amen. It will be proven in your life. It shall be proven in your life. It shall be proven in your life. You believe me? Let me hear your loudest amen. Let's round up number five. For the breakthrough we desire, we must keep engaging. In kingdom advancement and divorce with joy and rejoicing. Joy and rejoicing. Don't do something and wish you didn't do it. No. Joy and rejoicing. Don't be pressurized to do a thing. It doesn't work. Joy and rejoicing. So that your labor will not be wasted. You are doing follow-up with joy and rejoicing. You are carrying people to church with joy and rejoicing. You are giving your tithe to the Lord because you believe in the covenant with joy and rejoicing. You are promoting the kingdom at one level or another with joy and rejoicing. Because our service know the Lord, I go with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47 and 48. For the abundance of all things which you cannot see now, therefore shall thou serve thy enemies. God forbid. Amen. Your service will not boomerang as a cross. Amen. Do it with joy. God is not in need. I mean, uh, you do it with joy. He knows your level. Don't pose. Just do it with joy. And you'll be there. Number six. Engage with joy in your business pursuits. Don't let anything murmur or grumble in you so that you won't waste your harvest from your labor. The fig tree may not blossom now. There might not be fruit in the vine. But keep rejoicing. Then the Lord will show up. You murmur, he backs out. They that moment in the winter were not here, they were, they were destroyed. So engage with your business and divorce with joy and rejoicing. There is a show today, celebrate. There appears to be no show tomorrow, jubilate. The fit is not blossoming, celebrate. Then God will show up. God always intervenes in the midst of joy. Can I hear your amen? God always intervenes in the midst of joy. The breakthrough power of God breaks out in the midst of joy. So don't let no devil depress you. Somebody cheated you. Shh, rejoice. Thank God you are not the one who cheated somebody else. Can I hear your amen? amen? Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. It takes an atmosphere of joy to secure divine intervention. It takes what? More money and complaining destroys. Complaining complicates matters. 
The people complained, and God was provoked to wrath. No, it complicates matters. No one will ask you again what is wrong in your life. Yeah. You wake up in the morning at your business office with all smiles. Eh? You had a chat with all those fellows that are co-laborers with you. Today will be great. Amen. It's a day the Lord has made. Come on now, rejoice. Amen. Amen. Come on now, rejoice. That's the way to go forward. That's the way to go forward. I told you before that my wife couldn't believe when she first came to the Kaduna Church, the number she met. But the level of joy I was returning with every time I went. And it's every week. I'll drive my B2 630 kilometers. My God, you can't beat the Beatle. <laughs> Amen. And then uh, we have a great service. And there'll be 12 people. A great service. 19. When she came, we had 21, a whole house. It was jam packed. I preach my life out with smiles of joy and rejoicing. Who can bring one person except Jesus? Amen. Now see where grace has brought us. You want intervention? Stop grinning. You see, I've opened the shop now for the past uh, three hours. Nobody has come. Three hours? Ask me how many hours. After a bright encounter, when Jesus said, stand up and follow me, life, 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 life. And then we blew out of town, and the next thing that we saw was three people that was added to us. And then from three to five people, from five to ten, from ten to fifteen, my God. And that went on, first month, second month, third month. And then someday, we hit ninety. My God. Ninety, whole ninety. They're dancing. There was no video because they didn't have money to buy video. <laughs> you would think that we have taken over the nation. The jubilation. We stopped cutting uh, branches of trees here because we'll finish everything <laughs> with this number. In those days, we don't dance without cutting things. Amen. Everybody will jump up and down like antelopes. It takes joy and rejoicing to facilitate divine intervention and the breakthrough you desire. Amen. Stop getting up and be depressing everybody. They say, welcome. For what? <laughs> How is business today? Like yesterday. <laughs> In spite of Papa's prophecy, like yesterday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, Baba and Redemption come turn 80 this last week. When um, in those days he couldn't afford to rent a flat in motion. Amen. So he got one room. I was with him in uh, 84. He was in a two bedroom house in uh, a booty meter. Mm. But in that one room, God spoke to him. But you will build a city oh. from one room. Yes, sir. From what? One room. One room. But do you think it took place the following day? <laughs> no. No. You better wake up and get ready for a run of your life to secure every of God's agenda for your life. The good news is that no matter where you are today, your long-awaited mantle breakthrough has finally come. <laughs> By reason of light. And you are there already. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now, believe in the prophetic blessings that may be proclaimed on you from time to time. Believe in it. And today you are having a blessing going back home with you. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Give him glory and praise, everybody. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. One more time, give the Lord Jesus a big hand of praise for life.
Amen. Now, I'm back to it again. You want to be born again? Because you must be born again. Amen. Wherever you are, you want me to pray with you to be saved and know it. Not and guess that you are. To be saved and know it inside your knowing that you are born again. And experience the new creation that salvation brings about. And become a member of God's breakthrough family that's open to all that will care to believe Jesus. Wherever you are this morning, you'd like me to pray with you to be born again, please stand to your feet. And I'm praying with you where you are, right there. God bless you. God bless you. You want to be born again and become a member of God's breakthrough family? Please stand to your feet. You want to be born again and become a member of God's own breakthrough family? Please stand to your feet. Come on now. God bless you. God bless you. More people are getting up. Wherever you are, get up on your feet. I'm praying for you right there where you are. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, same time, there are those who walked away from that family, who know they have walked away from that family, and they desire to return today back to their Heavenly Father. Amen. That person who testified said he walked away 2007. He came down to below zero level and came back to his God. 2015. Long way, sir. So many years wasted. You want to return today back to Heavenly Father? Please stand to your feet. You want to return back to Heavenly Father? You were angry with him and so you left. You left his kingdom. Now you have tried the other side. It's not working. Please stand to your feet and return home consciously. He said, I dedicated my life, my wife and my two children back to God. Please stand to your feet and secure your own next level story in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Many more are standing up. You want to dedicate your life to Christ? Please get up on your feet. Okay, quickly now. Would you bow your head, please, wherever you are, bow your heads for prayers. You can stop filling those forms right now. Bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe I'm now born again. I'm saved. I'm free from the power of sin to serve you all through the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the kingdom. By your help, I will make heaven at the end of a triumphant life. Amen. Now, be blessed in the name of Jesus. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered till the day of his appearing. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. 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 Hallelujah. Please complete your forms very quickly and ensure that you pass them over to the church officials around with you. If you don't have your copy yet, of I'm redeemed for the topmost top. Please signify, raise your hand, and not shall we put one in your hand. Quickly, quickly this morning, quickly this morning, quickly this morning. Every invisible barrier on your path, Jesus will clear them off this coming Sunday. Amen. Every generational cause hovering over anyone's head, Jesus will clear them out this Sunday. Amen. So come ready for that holy service of breaking invisible barriers and Jesus will break them off your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, please take your point of contact if you have them and stand to your feet for a prophetic blessing upon your life and your endeavors. Upon your life and your endeavors. Upon your life and your endeavors. Thank you, Jesus. By the blessing of the upright is a city built Isaiah 44, verse 26, the word says, is the Lord that confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsels of his messengers. My counsel is this, that to touch higher grace than I will ever do all my life. Amen. That I will be alive to see you soar into the skies. Amen. That's my counsel, it's from my heart.
before my heart. That will be more a blessing to more people than I ever did. Amen. That's for my heart. But you can't run with my legs to win a race. You can't bust with my feet, fist to be heavyweight boxing champion. You can't rise with my brain to pass an exam. No. Your brain, your leg, your fist. Lift all those materials to heaven. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, he said, and whatever I do, it shall prosper. Now, grace to position yourself for satisfactory progress in your endeavors. Receive it now. Condition. Blessed is the man that walketh not the cancer of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of this comfort. Winner, winner. My God, more than conquer. Does not sit in the seat of this comfort, but his delight is in the law of his God, and upon it does make the day, day and night. So you can't spite my God and enjoy a minute of my time. Mm. Who are you? What do you carry? He says, Is that God? You say that to me? No, not as long as I live. Grace to line up with what causes whatever one does to prosper, receive it now. Amen. Grace to carry his presence yes, all through your days in life. Amen. That makes the difference all the time. Amen. That guarantees all weather breakthroughs. Amen. Receive it now. You have brought this point of contact to this breakthrough house. I therefore decree the breakthrough unction and virtue on this commission to fall upon the works of your hand. Every contractor going through a dry season, I decree the dawn of a new day. Everyone on the line for miracle jobs, I decree breakthroughs for you this week. I decree that every closed shop be reopened. I decree that the days of your struggles be over. I decree that the days of your struggles be over. In the name of Jesus. No more dry seasons. No more dry seasons. In the name of Jesus. Every tither, every kingdom sacrificer in this church, I decree access to new realms of breakthrough. Beginning from now, you will not be listed among the strugglers anymore. I decree an end to every weight of indebtedness. I decree favor from heaven to rewrite your story. In the name of Jesus, you must testify this month. Welcome to your month of testimony. Favor will locate you from everywhere. In the name of Jesus. Kingdom advancement and devil is God's jackpot for successful living. Therefore, as we depart from here today, may your dedication be renewed. No one comes empty this coming Sunday. Yeah. Prove to God that you are set for your next level. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give him glory. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. 
Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven and bless the name of the Lord who has brought us to his presence this morning. Let's magnify him. Let's glorify him that is none like our God. He reigns forever and forever. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Would you ask him to speak to you this morning, everyone? Jesus, I want to hear from you today. One word from God can sort any man out of any kind of issue. Let your word come my way right now. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you. We are all here at your feet. Let your word come true to any, every one of us. Amen. And grant us the rest we have been longing for. Amen. Let breakthrough become the new identity of everyone here. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. It's one thing to know what you are looking for. It's another thing to know where it can be found. People run, hurt us, scatter. To experience breakthrough, to command success. But they have not sat down to find out where can this be found? Where can this be found without stress? Where is this available? The most authentic book on the subject of success is the Bible. You may not like it. You may want to argue against it. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You observe it upon the day and I observe to do what is written there and then you make your way prosperous and then you have good success. This book recommended by the author of life. Recommended by the creator. This book one. And any other resource that helps you to understand this book. But it's all about this book. It's all about this book. It's all about this book. There is nothing from our various studies as leaders in this ministry that has 1% of what makes the success of this ministry. One. One percent. This book, ninety-nine point nine 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 nine. This book will bring out a church from inside the wilderness to be listed the topmost church in the world. This book has everything. As far as success is concerned, you are wasting time looking this way. Amen. Amen. Success in school does not mean success in life. I mean success in life. Successful living. Yes, sir. Meaningful living. Yes, sir. Impactful living. Yes, sir. It's only in this book. Lasting success. Success in perpetuity. Traditional success. Only in this book. I'm too privileged that you have this book. And to privilege that you have access to the content of this book. And to privilege that you have access to the content of this book. And to privilege. My God. Don't ever toy with your Bible. It's the custodian of your destiny. It's the custodian of your enviable, colorful, meaningful, impactful destiny. Don't ever toy with it. Get married to it. Married to it, it has power 
the content there has power to put you on top of the world in your field. He said, you observe to do what I command you to do. I'll set you on high above all nations of the earth. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Get seated, please. Amen. Now, let me have you say with me, success is sweet. Success is sweet. There's no point pretending. See, there's no point pretending. There's no point pretending. There is no one in his right mind who hates to be successful. Yes, sir. He may be envious of the successful, may be bitter against the successful, but he wants it secretly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is no man in his right mind who hates prosperity. Yes, sir. Between begging and giving, what do you choose? <laughs> Between trekking and riding, what do you choose? Riding. Between driving and flying, what do you choose? Flying. Now, that is, let's tell ourselves the truth. Yes, Success is sweet. Yes, sir. Highly tasteful. Yes, sir. Success is sweet and highly tasteful. And we should start from there to destroy religious uh, um, philosophies. <laughs> Success is sweet and highly tasteful. Failure is a burden. And Jesus came to take away our bodies. <laughs> Failure is a burden. Just be indebted and you know the weight. When you see your creditor, your heart cuts. When you see a car that looks like his own <laughs> coming towards your house, your temperature rises. <laughs> but in the name of Jesus, in this year of more than conquerors, nothing of that nature, not of that such burden, shall be seen on your life anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Arise, shine when your light comes. As it turns every reproach to glory. Although darkness will cover the earth and grow dark and grateful, but when your light comes, it turns to the envy of the world that has used to see you as, see you as a burden. turns you to envy in the place of pity. When your light comes, and in him, the world is life. And the life is the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. Please, take special note of the teachings of this man. And free yourself from a world of uncertainties not know what will happen next. And you'll be glad you did. The answer is in the book. All we need is to engage the dictates of this book command breakthroughs and remain in command. Not that you see it once, you can't see it again. To command breakthroughs and remain in command as to keep engaging the dictates of this book. There are many stories of yesteryear success that cannot be traced anymore. But whatever is accomplished by the truth endures for life. Whatever the Lord does shall be what? Forever. Your days of struggles are finally here. The end 
of your days of struggles are finally here. The end of your days of struggles are finally here. We've been looking at um, exploring success virtues in kingdom stewardship. One of the God ordained platforms to get you and I in command of breakthroughs for life. In command of breakthroughs for life. In command of breakthroughs for life. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that the lesson himself greatly in his commandments. His seed shall also be mighty upon earth. The generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Now you'll be wondering what is serving God there. Whosoever you yield yourself to obey, his servant ye are whom ye obey. Romans 6 and verse 16. The man that really delights in this is a joyful servant, joyful servant of God by jumping at his commandments. So that word is saying, blessed is the man that serves the Lord in truth and in deed. And proves it by obeying his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon her. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Well, and shall be in his house and treasures endured it forever. For that upright man, there arises light in darkness. My God. He, he's just in charge for all seasons. All weather breakthrough. Through joyful, cheerful, hilarious stewardship. This man delights himself in serving God and proves by obeying his commandment. And guess what happened? Whosoever has my command and keeps it is the one that loves me. And if you love me, you'll be loved of my father and I will love you and I will manifest myself to you. So eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has said for them that love him. So don't use God, love God. Yes, sir. Stop using God, love God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Stop using God. God come and help. God come and help. Go ahead. And you see once more help, you run away. Love God. You will lose it. You run away, you lose it. You disconnect from the pipe that supplies your means. It's gone. It's a matter of time. You cut down a tree, it still looks green. But the light it is gone. using God, you won't go far. Love God. Just love him for who he is. To you in person. Just love him. And turns to a wonder to your world. Thank you, Jesus. Serving God is a vital secret of success. Vital secrets. All great success stories in scriptures are from those great servants of God. Great, addicted servants of God. All great success stories of scriptures. All of them. Abraham, my servant. Psalm 104, I mean 105 and verse 42. <laughs> If you consider my servant Job, there is none like him on the earth. So he became the greatest of all men in, in the business world. Moses, the servant of God, Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 5. Daniel is thy God, whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee. Yes, a notable, unrepentant servant of God. Hallelujah. Daniel 6:23. I found David my servant with my holy oil of anointed him. Psalm 89, verse uh, 20 to 24. 
my servant. Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Second Peter 2 1. Amen. The computer one two. I mean, the computer one two. Whatever. Say <laughs> computer one, verse one. A servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. He was one who said, "We have left all." Judas didn't say that. Thomas never said it. So they all disappeared after Jesus left, one by one, into the thing here. Peter is still speaking. Yes. Where is Thomas? Can't find him. Enduring success, lasting success. They are the heritage of genuine servants of God. Genuine servants of God. I mean, Abraham was not a preacher, business emperor. Joe was a business mongoo. <laughs> so you don't have to be a pastor to serve God. Amen. I've been serving Jesus consciously, heartily, since I was 19. Amen. Then I didn't become a servant to God because I'm now a pastor. No. I mean, you go to a time you say, This place, Jesus was mentioned here. Who, who, whose interest are you serving? Whose interest are you serving? You're a servant of her, one that to serve his interest genuinely from your heart. Yes, sir. So it's not a title you carry, Archbishop. What is the meaning? There's no reward for Archbishop Lick. Amen. Amen. Go with this. Amen. Don't make this a spear tire. Mm. Ah. Seek ye for serve ye for the interest of the kingdom. And all these things shall be added to you. God doesn't need you and me for nothing. We need him for everything. You better agree. God doesn't need you for nothing. He doesn't need you for anything. You need him for everything. He doesn't need me for anything. I need him for everything. My God. So there's no point pulling your shoulder. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm a winner. And so what? Obey God, I'm saying. Obey God. Where God is taking you, you are not near the place. You are not near the place. But you get there. You will get there. You will get there. Those using God never last with him. He's those serving me that do. All those great names. Romans 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Jesus, I know, I'm Paul, I know. Mm. Titus 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, a servant of Christ. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? These are all clear definitions of the success virtues embedded in serving God. Success virtues embedded in serving God. Let's look at two uh, specific Outcomes of serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Serving God is a platform for supernatural breakthroughs. Jesus said to Peter, push your boat a little. In his frustrated state, Peter responded with delight. And after Jesus was done with preaching, no matter how long it took, Peter had not eaten anyway and he labored all night, he caught nothing. Now, cast your net into the deep for a drought. And when they had this done, he saw the greatest miracle of his life. Boat sinking, net breaking, other breakthroughs. Luke chapter 5 and verse 5 to 8. Supernatural breakthroughs is one of the virtues embedded in serving God. Supernatural breakthroughs. Israel is my son, my firstborn. Let my son go that he may serve me. God saw that they turned their heart to him. You didn't let him go, I will kill your son. 
unstoppable breakthrough. Did they bring them out or not? Indeed. Oh, yes. You enter into covenant to serve God, you have become a breakthrough candidate. You have become what? Candidate. You have become a breakthrough candidate. There's no go come. Make, I mean, enter into covenant to serve God, and you have become a celebrated breakthrough candidate. Amen. A celebrated breakthrough candidate. Until you are ready, it's not your turn. Until you are ready to enter into covenant to serve God, the truth and indeed, it's not your turn. It's not your turn. God is not a respecter of persons. When any believer enters the covenant to serve God and the interest of his kingdom, in truth and in deed, he has become a celebrated breakthrough candidate. Now, here is a pan each for each of you. That household that gave it to them, Luke 19, verse 13. And he said, Occupy till I come. And when he came, one said, I made 10 more. He said, Now I have the authority over 10 cities from one pan. Supernatural breakthrough. One pan, 10 cities. You made five more. Okay, five cities. You are now in royal earnest. Over five cities in your field. 17 to 19, Luke chapter 19, verse 13 and slash 17 to 19. Supernatural breakthroughs. He called his servant. He called his servant. And when he returned, he just endowed them with supernatural order of breakthroughs. Well, um, one reacted negatively, seven absconded. That's human nature. The human factor is there. If I cry till now, till Jesus returns, some will never pray one line of kingdom of prayer. Some will never pray one line. I must say one line. They are among the seven who have got condemned. If I set myself on fire, they won't talk to one soul. One. One soul. They are born yourself. What concerns me? One soul. They are among the seven that have condemned. Some are very angry with me. Is the one that reacted negatively. <laughs> Carry your one pound, my friend. What's the matter? <laughs> That's the human kind of classification anywhere, sir, anywhere in the world. You know, there's a philosopher who said only 5% of people make things happen. How many? 25% are entertained by the happiness, they watch the happiness. 70% don't even know anything is happening. They're just on their own. They don't know nothing is happening. May you be among the 5%. Amen. Amen. That's the story of that Luke 19, 13 to 20. That's the story. I know how many of us are in the powerhouse. And I know how many are near this commission today. Maybe five, if I'm right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And that's a lot. Sir. It's a race. Life is a race, a marathon race. So dropping off on the road is so easy. That's why Red Cross vehicle follows them. As you sink, they just bring you. They start putting water in you and opening your mouth for oxygen. You won't fall off on the way. Yeah. He said, I must be first the falling away of many. You won't fall away. Amen. The good news is, God has ordained you a breakthrough candidate on the earth. May you not sell off your birth right for a morsel of me. He yeah. said, You are the salt of the earth. That is a valuable asset that is sorted after. Salt is of high level value to human existence. And you are the salt of the earth. You are not a burden to the world, you are a blessing to the world. You are the light of the world, a pace setter. 
a pathfinder and a trailblazer. So you are redeemed a breakthrough candidate on the earth. Don't sell off to junks in town. Don't sell off to junks in town. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I will multiply them, it shall not be few. I will also glorify them, it shall not be small. How? Because they engaged their heart to seek unto me. They were actively in partnership with me in the advancement of my kingdom. So I will turn them from people to nobles. I will turn them from refrats to governors. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19 to 20. It will impart on their children. Their children shall be as a full time. Glory to God. Because they are actively engaged in partnership with me towards the advancement of my kingdom. That's what it says. Breakthrough is our heritage in stewardship. Breakthrough is our covenant returns in stewardship. Unbelievable explosions. Amen. It's a right in stewardship. One pound, ten cities. What? One pound, five cities. What? They came to find out how much they are made out of the assignment he gave them. And responded to their, to their report accordingly. Number two, serving God is a platform for experiencing supernatural favor. Say with me, like we always do here, nothing flies like favor. Come on, let me hear you say that. man Joseph in his deepest valley enjoyed favor as a slave. Nothing flies like favor. And he became the custodian of all of Potiphar's estate. He became an heir of Potiphar's house. As a slave without a dress. Go down to prison to another dungeon of misfortune. But favor found them. And whatever was done in the prison, Joseph was the door of it. He found favor with the keeper of the prison and entrusted all prisoners into his hand. Nothing flies like favor. Genesis 39, 21 and 22. Nothing flies like favor. Genesis 39, 1 to 5. Nothing flies like favor. Thou by thy favor hast made my mountain to stand out. When you hide your face, I was troubled. Nothing flies like favor. Psalm 90 and verse 7. They got not the land of nations stronger than them by their own power, but by their right hand. Delighting under the arm because of a favor unto them. Psalm 44. And verse 1 to 4. Favor. Nothing flies like favor. And stewardship is one platform that endows believers with supernatural favor. Psalm 102 verse 13 to 15. <laughs> that shall I have a mercy upon Zion for a time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Because their servants take a pleasure in the stones of Zion. And for what it does, they are wrong. Therefore, the hidden shall fear the name of the Lord and all the ends of the earth, thy glory. And all the ends of the earth, thy glory. I found some humor sometimes in the course of the week. 100 most reputable people on earth, all the kings of the earth, 
their favor. And they put this short man's name on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> All the ends of their favor. Come and say favor. 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 Yes, ends of the earth. Yes, All the ends of the earth. Yes, on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the north <laughs> or southwest zone. On the earth. On the earth. Yeah. Yeah. All the ends of the earth. I'm not living for nothing. God knows, the devil knows. I'm living my life for God. Absolutely so. Unrepentantly so. Always so. Joyfully so. Dancefully so. That's how I live my life. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. I had no time for honeymoon after marriage. I'm not a dummy. No time. I'm not joking. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm your pastor. Before I knew you, I was not it. If God says to this boy today, get out of town. Your assignment is over. Come with me to Benin Republic. I'm gone. You'll be seeing me on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need your permission to go because you didn't send me here in the first instance. <laughs> No steak here, sir. His steak is my steak. Yes, sir. I have no steak here. I pray that you will find a place for God in the center of your heart. Amen. Amen. It will just turn you to a wonder. They'll be telling you stories that you can never hear on your own. Because it's time to hear the story is not there. Somebody's story is changing. Yeah. If that is your story, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. He said, my son, give me your heart. Leave the rest to me. Proverbs 3, 26. Give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Just do what I tell you to do. Leave the remaining. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Your days of struggles are over. Your life from henceforth shall be like a dream of the night. Yeah. When the Lord changed the story, our stories were like them that dream. Amen. Amen. I was there in Nigeria when somebody called me from America. He said, Sir, have you heard? I said, What are they hearing? He said, They say you are the richest person in the world. I said, They are not lying. But I didn't hear. <laughs> Even if they are wrong, that's okay. <laughs> we, is there any time in my life I will start checking those news? Yes. Oh, you say against me, I didn't hear. So you can't disturb me. Oh, you say for me, I didn't hear. You can't blow my head. I don't have any problem. Please let God have his place. And the only place he will take is the first place. God is too big for a second place in your life. Come and say, God is too big. God is too big. Now, when the president comes to your house, we see Julie how? The, the first place. You are the head of family, but not when he came. <laughs> he has the first place. How can you try this king of kings in the second place? Mm. That's why he won't stay there. Give him the first place. He knows your level. He knows my level. He knows where we are coming from. So there's no point pretending. If you are on the mat and give him his tool, he will sit down there. But don't sit on the stool and put him on the mat. No. Yeah, you won't sit. In the precious name of Jesus, success will no longer be a stranger to you yeah. and your household. Yeah. From this moment on, things will be opening up in your favor. As you get committed to serving God and the interest of his kingdom, we delight, we delight. Not testing God, not tempting God. You just love him and you trust him for whatever he says. So you keep doing it with utmost delight. That makes all the difference. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. 
Now, today is our covenant day of breaking invisible barriers. I will shock you with something here. Amen. Amen. And I know you will recover. Amen. We must recognize that ignorance, spiritual ignorance, is a foremost barrier on our path of destiny. It's as strong as the strongest satanic stronghold on our path. It's as destructive as the most wicked devil in hell. Watch the thief, that's the devil, comment on for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Same way. We we'll see at chapter 4, verse 6. And it's invisible. You can hear three piece suit. I not know the truth. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you is my people are head bound because they have no knowledge. Isaiah five and verse thirteen. So, agree. There are invisible satanic barriers. Yes, it's in scriptures. I feel also good sitting to feel as it grown tears. An enemy has done this. That's okay. Matthew 13, 24 to 28. He said, I Paul will have come to you, but Satan hindered us. That's okay. It is true, it's real. Satan hindered us. A great one fetch has opened unto me, but there are many adversaries. That's okay. But ignorance does not do any less than those barriers. You don't need any Satan to create tension in your family. Just stop loving your wife. Tension will sit down there as chairman. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need any demon to have storms in your home. Just stop submitting your husband because you're a liberated woman. <laughs> it is just so. You can now pray. Papa can pray. Apostle can pray. Prophet can pray. Your group can pray over you. It won't make a difference. If you don't turn in that light, you won't have peace. Somebody came to me as a minister, I brought an offering, he said, I need breakthrough in my ministry. I said, come to the minister's conference. Come, it's not offering, do this offering for breakthrough. Come to the minister's conference and cut the light required to move to the next level. You know, if they give you eye drop, don't put it in the ear. It can deafen your ear. There are different treatment for different things. Amen. I'm a carrier by grace of the mantle of Egan. I didn't give Egan one time when I carried his mantle. One time. There's even nowhere to see him to give him my own kind of seat. <laughs> Amen. You know, so it's, it's, I say, what are face answers to face to the heart of my answers to another? Yes. Wow. It's not the offer of one. It's internal. Somebody's story is changing. Yes. <laughs> To clear up the barriers on our, on our path, let's look at the following keys and then we close. Number one, again, be born again. <laughs> Don't 
be tired of writing a job. Yes, I do. That's why the big time story of every mortal man begins. You must be born again. Jesus said so. Or you cannot see or experience the blessings that the kingdom of God offers. You must be born again. You know, as far as your eyes can see, it shall be given to you. If you are not born again, you can't see. So it's not going to be given to you. Nothing. You must be born again and remain so. Not born again in 1918. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then you die again. <laughs> remain so. Remain a bona fide son and daughter of the Most High God. Remain a bona fide member of his household. And then all the privileges of the kingdom pertain to you. Can I hear your amen? amen. No gate crashing. You can pretend to a man can you pretend to God? He knows your dance state and your upright. He knows your thoughts are far off. Are you born again? That's the question. Now, do you come to church? Are you still in the faith? Or you walk that way like that prodigal son and sleep naked till his found mercy and came to himself and returned back to the Father? Once born again is not always born again. Therefore, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. Don't let your life be turned to darkness. Work it out. Don't let your first love disappear. Work it out. That's where the journey begins. Number two, keep working in the light of his word. We are redeemed as children of light. And if we keep walking in the light, the path of darkness cannot stop the way against us. There is no way darkness can build a barrier against light. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 5, we are children of light. Ye are all the children of light. All, not some, not most. God is light, and we are his children. And light begins light. So we are all children of light. Ephesians 5, verse 8. He said, Now walk as children of light. By walking in the light. Walk in the light. The light of God's word. Darkness will be clearing the way on their own accord. On their own accord. On their own accord. On their own accord. The barriers on our path are by the path of darkness. So when we become an embodiment of light, darkness clears the way. Darkness does what? Clears the way. Number three, keep walking by faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Believe in the light. In the validity of that light. Believe in the efficacy of that light. Above all, taking the shield of faith, you quench all the fiery darts of the devil. So they quench the fiery furnace. Because they trusted in their God. They stopped the mouth of lions because they believe in their God. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Ephesians 6 16. Daniel 3 28. Daniel 6. And verse 23. Believe in his God. Keep walking by faith. You clear off all debris that might be hanging on the way. Walking by faith. Walking by faith. 
Number four, keep serving the Lord. Which brings you to partnership with God. Whose right hand have I hold to subdue nations with them? And I will lose the loins of kings. I will open to him the two leaf gates, and it shall not be shown. I will cut in pieces, I will break in pieces the gates of brass, and cut in sun that the pass over you. Whose right hand I hold him? So when you are in stewardship, you are in partnership. Yes, sir. It's holding your right hand. Monote, Tonea, Teclalo. Whatever can't stop the way against them, can't stop the way against you. He sent them to go and they went to the place where he himself will come. So he went to be in partnership with them. They went for them because everybody was working with them. Partnership. Still worship equals partnership. Still worship equals partnership. Still worship equals partnership. So, can, can I tell you this? My active partnership with Jesus has made my case impossible for the devil. Mm. Has made my case impossible for the devil and all his agents. They are too conscious of it. This man walks with God. <laughs> How? <laughs> he says, still worship. Which equals active partnership. You can't buy that with money, sir. You can't buy that with money. You can't buy partnership with God with money. You can't buy with money. They are stood by me tonight, an angel of God, Paul said. Is there Paul? Take it easy, there shall be no loss. <laughs> Active partnership. Active partnership. You know the strength of Moses in Egypt? Partnership. Saying God is invisible. Active partnerships are. Pharaoh, stop there. Active partnership. Go, party on there. Speak on. Yes. Speak on. Pharaoh is a top hearted man. Speak on. Active partnership makes you an impossible case for the devil. Yes. Makes you an impossible case for the devil. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Keys to clearing all invisible barriers on your path. Active partnership with Jesus. And then finally, a lifestyle of praise that secures divine presence day and night because God inhabits the place of his people. A lifestyle of praise. A lifestyle of praise. A lifestyle of praise. It's like unto thee, O God. It's like thee, fearful in holiness. I mean, uh, glorious and holiness are fearful in praises, doing wonders. So it makes you a wonder to all situations of life. A lifestyle of a lifestyle of praise. One time, my senior colleague, Mike Murdoch, and I were coming in from Capernaum to Canaan land, and he said, he counted that I said, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, 72 times. How many times? 72 times. Yeah. Between that place and now. It's an addiction. It's what? It's an addiction. When Thanksgiving comes to addiction, God's presence becomes resident with you. Whether you are in bed, out of bed, wherever you are, you are just cocoon with his presence. Cocoon with his presence. When you murmur, it disappears. When you stop murmuring, it comes back. And you are either murmuring or praising. You can't be neutral. <laughs> Nature abhors vacuum. You are either complaining or celebrating. You are either murmuring or praising. You can't say, I'm not doing any. You are doing one. <laughs> you are doing one. Amen. You are always doing one. You may not be conscious of it, you are always doing one. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
Jesus. Your heart is singing. Your mouth is singing. Your feet is dancing. Inside, outside, everywhere. You just carry his presence. Which will always make a difference. No barrier can stand his presence. Where are you going? Tremble thou up at the presence of God. Everybody here trembles yes. at his presence. Somebody said they just changed. Yeah. From your business? Yeah. By complaining about money day and night? Yeah. You are smarter than that now. Yeah. Don't send God away from your home by complaining about everything. Enough is enough. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand, please. Magnify him. Thanks for showing you what you have caught as light. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. Expect that by the power of the blood on this communion table today. Everyone held captive in the pit where there is no water shall be rescued. Yeah. As for thee also by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth your prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Tony the song goes, ye prisoners of hope, even today I will render to you double. Whatever you have lost to the captivity of hell, you are getting them back double today. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. He silenced the gods of Egypt by the power of the blood. Therefore, today, every satanic stronghold on your path of triumph, your path of victory, your path of breakthrough, I declare them judged. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Now, very quickly, you are here in this service. You are not born again yet. Please, see today as an opportunity for a change of story. You want to be forgiven? You want your sins forgiven by Jesus? You want your name in the book of life? You want to live an overcomer's life? You want to see the barriers on your path clear? And you want to make heaven at the end of your day? First and foremost, you must be born again. Wherever you are, you let me to pray with you to be saved, to be born again today, to become a child of God and become a bona fide member of God's own household. Please stand to your feet wherever you are. And I'll be praying for you right now. God bless you. Remain standing, please. God bless you. And 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 God bless you. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. There are also people here that need to return back to their Heavenly Father. You want to dedicate your life to Christ? Please turn. You want to dedicate your life to Christ? Please turn. You want to dedicate your life to Jesus? Please turn. You want to say, Jesus, enough. He said, enough. I've tried alternative. It didn't work. I'm coming back home. Please turn. 
You want to come back to Heavenly Father? Please stand. You want to dedicate your life to Jesus? Please stand. And remain standing, please. Amen. Now, right away, everyone standing, both for the first and second call, I'm praying with you right there where you are. Please stop filling your forms and bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God and pray this simple prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I will serve you as long as I live by your grace. I will make heaven at the end of my journey. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them into your kingdom today. Let the same grace sustain them. I cover everyone of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered to the end of time. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. 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 Please complete those slips given to you and pass them over to the church officials around where you are seated there and they will be in touch with you for the furtherance of your joy and the development of your faith. Give us that privilege by filling that, those forms appropriately and we'll be in touch with you. Don't forget Believer's Foundation class. Foundation is very vital to any building. You want a building that will stand the test of time, have a great foundation for it. So please endeavor to submit those forms after this um, program. We also have online uh, Believer's Foundation class program like you had in the announcement. Take advantage of either of the two of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we all stand, please? Thank you, Jesus. Can we have the stewards please take their positions now to serve the communion table? Now listen to this. The communion is a message that empowers believers to live like Christ. Jesus came down here over 2,000 years ago and is still impacting the world today. Listen to this. As you partake of this communion, I see you blessed with generational order of success. Yeah. With generational impact. Yeah. If Jesus studies, your children will pray in the name of the God you serve. Yeah. Your grandchildren will pray in the name of the God you serve. Your great-grandchildren will pray in the name of the God you serve. And he will hear them. Lord, empower me to live like you, Jesus. Spirit, soul, and body. Through this communion, go ahead and pray. Empower me to live like you, Jesus. No sickness, no disease, no emotional breakdown, no physical breakdown, no satanic oppression. Empower me to live like you, Jesus, spirit, soul, and body. Empower me to turn your break, your other breakthrough through this communion today. breakthrough in my life.
Jesus. Precious name we are praying. Now this step is declared the flesh and the blood of Jesus. And according to John 6, 57, everyone partaking of this by faith today is empowered supernaturally to live like Jesus. Spirit, soul, and body. Commanding the Jesus order of breakthrough in all areas of life. In the name of Jesus. Whatever could not be found in Christ that's working in anyone now is flushed out in the name of Jesus. Every terminal disease is flushed out in the name of Jesus. Every oppression of the devil is terminated in the name of Jesus. No more nightmares in the name of Jesus. No more fighting and wrestling in your sleep in the name of Jesus. A new day for you. Now, Father, we receive this today as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let the prophetic word that has gone forth deliver in everyone's life. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please get seated, take your turn, and approach the table with faith. All the faith you can get. All the faith you can monster. Your turn for a change of story. Now, let's have the praise team. We become condemnation. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. The truth can lead all of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am free. I am free from condemnation. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. I cannot see the truth.
Lift up your two hands to heaven. I stand today to cause every barrier installed by the devil on the path of your glorious destiny. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, was he preserved? I decree your liberty today. I decree, decree thorough fear for you in all areas of life. Yeah. And I pray that the light you have received today will keep paving the way forward for you. Yeah. You never toy with God's presence anymore. Yeah. Grace to remain in active partnership with Jesus through genuine, tireless, delightsome stewardship. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Paul said, I labor more than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. The grace that keeps a man and a woman on track with God, serving God with utmost delight, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Please get seated for a moment and pick this very important. Give the Lord another big hand of praise. Our mission as a church is to wipe away the tears of mankind in all areas of life. Next Sunday, as announced, it's our covenant day of breakthrough. We need home-based success for our success to have true meaning. So every tension in homes shall come to an end. Every challenge of marital delay shall come to an end. Amen. Light will come forth and darkness will give the way. Amen. Get prepared for it. It shall be a service of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Secondly, we have this um, specialized three-day program uh, coming up from Tuesday. Um, unraveling the covenant platform for business startups so you can start well and get going great. Can I hear your amen? amen? You say, what has church got to do with it? Now ask me, what has church got to do with the university? <laughs> come and say light. Light, come and say light. Whether you are happy or angry, Covenant is paving the way for a new approach to university education in Nigeria and around the world. No. By light, by light. This is kingdom business that started with four people. Mm -hmm. See what has happened Hallelujah. over the years. Our publishing business did not even have a typewriter. See the industrial scale of it. Publishing Bibles for distribution. And millions of books on one time. If a farmer knows the way you, to where you are going, you better listen. Yes, sir. Otherwise, you'll be speaking grammar and miss your ways. <laughs> if a farmer knows the way to where you are going, yes, you better listen. I beg you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I package that course content by myself. And I'm jealously watching over it. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. In case you're interested of a brighter way of going forward, you better cut those three days off mm -hmm. and say to them to know the way forward. Amen. You know I'm not struggling in ministry. I'm privileged to know a bit of the way yes. to go. And going that way is working all the time. Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just walk down to the press and you see wonders of the day mm. in terms of the kind of equipment that are working there. We have a machine there. If anything goes wrong, it speaks in Germany. They can fix direct. It didn't start that way. Come and find the best way to start. Instead of they don't repair foundation. Forty foundation, you have lost the building. You have lost the building. Instead of up and down, struggling without end. There shall be visions and revelations, I believe, in the course of that program. Thank you, Jesus. This week is our Operation Andrew Week. The week where we are all encouraged and admonished and instructed. Enjoy instructions. Instructed. You are instructed to hunt for a soul to bring to Christ. Somebody brought Peter. Someone here will bring another Peter this coming. Amen. Amen. Who will change the world? Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen. So, without prejudice to uh, our district outreaches, our personal engagement, partnership engagement, continues all through the week. Don't be among the people that have sconded and lost their place forever without a name. Be part of this world. On the altar of prayer, be part of it. Amen. Amen. You can't go out, you can go up. Yes. In prayer, be part of it. In getting them across the church, be part of it. Yes. So it's not even fair for us to be looking for commercial vehicle in this church. Yes. You made the number of businesses that can now have buses that can run on Sunday yes. and carry on with their business on Monday. Yes. We just need to get connected. Yes. Amen. 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 Okay, I have this bus for my business. It will carry people in my zone on Sunday. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. I've been waiting for vehicles that have no brake, have no tire. Yeah. We, we should grow, we should grow that. <laughs> when I see kingdom in my heart, it was enlarged. I pray that you will not be an onlooker Amen. in this wave of glory. Amen. I pray that no one here will be an onlooker Amen. in this wave of glory. I pray that no one here will be an onlooker Amen. in this wave of glory. And as the Lord lead, whatever hides this ministry's case, you won't scale any less. Amen. We don't have ordinary citizens here. We have global citizens yes, sir. in this church. And in the name of Jesus, your place that another man will not take. Amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. Like a dream of the night, there shall be dramatic change of stories this year. In the year of Joseph's release, yes, everything turned. Yes, In this our prophetic year of release, the seventh year of the one of visitation, everything will turn to the point of shedding tears of joy. I said everything will turn around in your life to the point of shedding of tears. Everyone here must shed tears of joy this year. Amen. You shall shed tears of joy this year. Amen. Over your family, Amen. over your sons and your daughters, Amen. over your health, Amen. over your spouse, Amen. over the works of your hand, Amen. over your finances. I'm saying by prophetic power, you shall shed tears of joy this year. Please stand to your feet. Your tears of joy is around the corner. Many 
will happen this month. Yeah. Lift up your two hands and celebrate the faithfulness of God who always keeps his word. Celebrate the faithfulness of God who always keeps his word. We serve a great God. Unchallengeable, irresistible, will always have his way when allowed by you, not by the devil. There is no provision of scriptures that has the devil in the equation. If the devil allows, then I will do this. Is if you and me will allow. Every scripture, every scripture is a verdict. But we only come to pass as allowed by your faith. My prayer this morning is that everyone's heart and faith will be set to allow God have his way in their life. Yeah. Lift up your two hands and thank Jesus for the week and ask him to send you your word today that will make all the difference. When the word of Joseph came, everything turned like a dream of the night. Let my own word come today. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we are here at the feet of Jesus, your son, to be taught, to learn, and to enter into our rest. Let this be the experience of everyone today. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Just before we sit down, um, we had the 12th matriculation of Landmark University last Friday. Amen. Amen. And by divine design, as God will always do, of all private institutions in Nigeria, Covenant Landmark, they follow each other. Covenant Landmark. Covenant Landmark. Awesome God. Everything works in this ministry. Therefore, by the anointing of today, the grace that keeps everything working here will come upon your life. Yeah. It hasn't worked for just one year, two years, three years, 10, 20, 30, 40. My God. When you subject any finding to a long time test, it becomes a law. And it's behaving the same way. It becomes a law. When false propaganda is an apotheosis, it's somebody's idea that is still undergoing some tests. Amen. After some while, it becomes a theory. And when the occurrence is consistent, over a longer period, it becomes a law. Now watch. You want to know whether there are success virtues in kingdom stewardship. Ask me. <laughs> Amen. 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 Just ask me. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. They are so the Lord running to and fro in all the years. You don't need to run to Jamaica to make mark. <laughs> wherever you may be on the earth, wherever the sun shines, his word works. 
He said, my eyes run to a foreign. All they are to show myself strong. Wherever they are. They are in Chad, they are in Nije, they are in Dub uh, Washington, D.C. Can't be anywhere. In the name of the Lord Jesus, yes. no one here shall remain an onlooker. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, how can the largest church building is going on now in the history of Christianity, yes, sir. in the history, yes, sir. and now in this impoverished place, without pressure on nobody, Hallelujah. without harassment on anybody, Hallelujah. without nobody knowing whether you give or you don't give, my God, God will do something in your life. So, give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated. Please get seated. Thank you, Jesus. No one here is disadvantaged. Your color is not disadvantaged. Your location is not disadvantaged. Your citizenry is not disadvantaged. I wish I were not an American. Go and be something else. I wish I were not in Nigeria. I know what will have happened. Nothing will have happened. It's the same with you. If you don't change the way you live, nothing will happen. My God. Ransomed by the same blood. Saved by the same Savior. Going to the same heaven. You have no disadvantage of any kind. I've never wished I'd be somewhere else. In the beginning of my beginning days, I've never wished I was somewhere else. I'd never wished. I'd never prayed once. Oh, I wish. I don't wish. God never makes mistake. He put you here. This is where you belong. If he sends you out for one thing or another, why not? Don't let no devil dislocate you. There is no location advantage in the covenant. There is no location advantage. No. I will have made my roads to America in 1987. Jesus, the deliverer, the rescuer, he rescued me. <laughs> Somebody's story is changing. Amen. Success is not in the place you are trying to go. It's in where you stand in the world. Come on now. It's if you do what I tell you to do, I don't care where you are. You make your way prosperous and you have good success. Thank you, Jesus. God will shock the world through many people here. Amen. If you are one of them, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. God will shock the world through your strange dimension of breakthrough. Amen. That little endeavor of yours will soon become a global phenomenon. Amen. Just stand strong in the world. I had one very interesting encounter in the course of the week. The world works. Say with me, the world works. But only for those who work it. My God. The world works. Only, but only for those who work it. Inside every seed is a tree but only for those who plant the seed. My God. <laughs> Luke chapter 8 verse 11. Now the parable is seed. This, the seed is the word of God. The word only works for those who work it. It doesn't work for those who preach it. Those who quote it. Worse still, those who claim it. Claim a harvest with a bottle of seed on your bookshelf. No. I speak to you, seed. Generate harvest. The seed will be laughing at you. I don't generate harvest by you speaking, it's by you sowing. Sow this seed, engage with it, 
apply yourself to it. The world works, but for only those who walk it. Thou shalt serve. He shall bless. And he shall take things away from you. And so, you like the promises, then take the responsibility. <laughs> you don't serve. You don't belong. Those things don't belong to you. Stop claiming what won't work. He that winneth souls is wise, and the wise shall inherit glory. You want your shame wiped away? Go outside the gate, behind his reproach. My God. Go outside there. Go outside there, behind his reproach, then he wipe away your reproach. Amen. Proverbs 11, 30, and Proverbs 3, 35. <laughs> Somebody was just coming now. It's not something you are waiting for, it's something you are working at. The world works, but for only those who work it. Now, in the multitude of people is the king's honor. Proverbs 14, 28. And he that honors me, I will honor. So be part of drafting multitudes to Jesus. That you do by effective follow up of those who minister to, that you do by um, arranging for how they come into church. That to do by buying a bus in case you are blessed to that level. Amen. Amen. That to do by putting that convert into your car when you are coming out, wind up the glass and then close your eyes. <laughs> I mean, in the multitude of people is a king's honor. When God honors you, every devil follows after. Yes, sir. Follow to honor you, sir. Yes, sir. Every devil. Every devil. Every devil. Yes, sir. Follow suit. <laughs> Honor from God. You can't despise it. Uh, people have been saying a few things that are uncomplimentary about me, but never in my presence. Mm -hmm. When they see me, thank you, sir. <laughs> Every one of them. I've not seen an exception. We just thank God for you, sir. <laughs> hey, hey, and he knows I'm no hearing news. I won't know that he was the one who said something. I've not seen one, sir. Sir. I've not seen one man on the field say, you are a fool. No one. You honor me, I'll honor you. You honor me, I'll honor you. So instead of doing fasting and prayer, just apply yourself to the world. Or don't, you don't kill yourself. <laughs> Now, since I signed up for the covenant of wealth, I was wealthy. Yes. Not I was going to be wealthy. I was wealthy. You can't make me think otherwise. Now, am I a pauper now? It's not because I read it or I found it, but I did it. And I'm doing it. Yes, sir. And I did it before and I stopped. Papa said, nothing has worked for me. It's you. Don't look for the devil. It's you. All the devils cost you 25%. You cost yourself 25%. Your disobedience cost you 75%. Even if no devil came, you are still a failure. Assuming you got 25%, is that pass marking your school? Somebody said, you are not a failure until you are looking for who to blame for it. So stop looking for who to blame. There's a black woman behind my house. Okay, who should be behind your house? Are you not living in the black environment? <laughs> There's a witch in my village. A witch doesn't need to be in your village to attack you. Amen. Anyhow, somebody's breaking forth. Amen. Please know that the world only works for those who walk it. He said, Be ye doers of the world and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. If anyone be. He out of the world and not dress like a man that looks at himself in the mirror and walks away and forget what manner of man he looks like. But also uh, look at into the perfect law of liberty. He not being really forget who he is, but a doer of the work, a doer of the work, a doer of the work, 
that man shall be blessed in his deed. A doer of the work. A doer of the work. A doer of the work. That man shall be blessed in his deed. It's your turn. Yeah. Cast your name to the deep. And after they had this done, my God, they had to do it before they caught multitude of fishes. Whatever it takes you to do, therefore, do it. Otherwise, you're having fun. And the end is not always a miracle. Doing what God, whatever God says, the end product is always a miracle. And they fed the filled water pots with water, and there was abundance of wine, the highest order of wine, without money, without price. Jesus is doing something new in your life. Yeah. Allow him to. You are to be envied, not to be pitied. And in the name of Jesus, this year, I see God and you. I see you and God in active partnership. Yeah. That will lead into unstoppable breakthroughs in your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Now, very quickly, exploring success virtues in kingdom stewardship. He has provided for us in redemption all things that make for life and godliness. They are accessible through revelation and obtainable through application. Accessible through revelation, but applicable, obtainable through application. The Cardiff Party celebrate revelation and over-celebrate it. And most don't have any trace of manifestation. Because revelation on its own adds no value. It's the application that releases the value. You know what it takes to travel out? It doesn't get you out. You have to now apply yourself to what you know. Man, you need an international passport. You need to apply for visa. You need to wait for appointment. You now need to look for money <laughs> to buy a ticket. So, so the revelation of what to do doesn't take you out. Isn't that simple enough? Yes, sir. I mean, you know how many things people know that has no reflection in their life. But because they won't apply themselves to it. The day God showed me the secret of church growth, we began. <laughs> we print, come and see flyers same week. It's not what you know that changes you. It's what you do with what you know. So revelation holds no water without application. We are about to do the same thing. here first and all these things and he lists the amazing things before then all these things including the listening of Solomon and that Solomon in all his grace not only like one of these lilies but you seek here first you beat all of them <laughs> now, now you now sign up for it otherwise you'll be quoting it and preaching it and it won't be showing Jesus was preaching and showing. Anything that does not show in your life, you have not applied it. You have not applied your. If it doesn't show, God's word shows. It becomes flesh. So if you can't see it, it's not applied. I have a bottle of a mustard seed in my house because I just know the size. Now that will never become a harvest forever. It can only get destroyed in that bottle. 
It can't change. So no matter how much seed you got from the world, revelation, it won't add value. Without being planted, without you and I giving ourselves to it. That's simple enough. There's so much success virtue in the world. And we have plenty of that domicile in still worship. Thou shalt serve, he shall bless. His blessings make rich and have no sorrows. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Prosperity there does not just mean money, it means satisfactory progress. Satisfactory what? Progress. Oh, just changing level, jumping levels, jumping levels. If they obey and serve him. My sacrifice, sacrifice, 1994 for Ajib was 10,000 naira a month. Who told the most of you? But continuity yes, sir. in doing what you are doing yes, is what keeps changing your story. Yes, sir. Continuity. If I give God 10,000, I call sacrifice, he will slap me. No, not till I die. No. Continuity, 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 steadfastness. Your heart is, hand is on the plow, you are not looking back. It's not proper for you to plant your maize seed yesterday and ask your wife to come along with a basket. They say, Where are you going? We are going for the harvest. You know it's raining. Oh, you don't see it rain two days ago. So, what would the maize be doing in the ground? We are going for the harvest today. I know they are deceiving us. Where is the harvest now? <laughs> they say, what happened? I saw maize here. Two acres. And it has rained three times. Okay, what does maize need to grow? Is it not rain? So where is my maize? Me and church, man. Me and <laughs> No, no, no. When you cast the seed to the ground, um, you go to bed. Don't kill yourself. Amen. <laughs> and it groweth up. You know not how. First, it brings forth the blade, then the flower, and then by pollination, the fruit. And the fruit will have to have to mature. Yes, sir. You don't just see something and say, <laughs> My God. Yeah. Mark 4, 27 and 28. Yes, That's the way it works. Yes, sir. Now, in the name of Jesus, no one will trash his glorious destiny. Yeah. So, Get engaged, just plug in, be yourself. Now, in the midst of that, I saw me grew to 50,000 of sacrifice, uh -huh. and then 100,000. My God, steadfastness. Now, I, I want to harass the devil. I would never call 100,000 sacrifice to my God till I die. That stage is past. Consistency, consistency. You can't tell the worth of stewardship until you become steadfast. You can't tell the worth of stewardship until you become steadfast. I have never had a rethink. I've never had one day of rethink. Oh boy, are you sure you are correct? I've never had one day of rethink. Eddie, yes, one day. Yes, I've never had one day. And then, uh, oh my God. And you know the way they say it, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, I think I've tried. Mm. Satan said, you don't try. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting for you to say this long time. <laughs> ah, nobody has tried more than you. In fact, you have tried more than Papa. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. But I know, now let me tell you what I know, and it will help your faith. If an army of giants of global repute does not arise from here, I'm not sent. Mm. <laughs> I know. It always shows me things to come. It shows me things to come well before they come. 
I saw this building 17 years before it came. I saw internet before I saw the light of day. The Holy Ghost specializes in telling people things to, and telling his prophets things to come. I saw an army of giants of no comparison around the world emerging from our platform. In their great numbers, the kind of concentration the world has never known. That they talk about this sector, they are the one. That sector, they are the one. This sector, they are the one. By doing what we are hearing now, not by waiting for it. Just keep at it. We are not just talking about success, we are talking about all around success, and we are talking about generational success. It's not available anywhere in the world. All around success. Generation of as provided for in redemption. You won't miss your own. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Again, remember, success is not a transferable virtue. Each one will have to make his way there. Amen. <laughs> this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You may the end upon day and night. <laughs> and it's up to do. To do. And then you make your way prosperous. And then you have good success. <laughs> now, Abraham gave all his inheritance to Isaac. Dad didn't make Isaac. No, he didn't. Isaac had to sow in the land. <laughs> and then he received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. And the man went forward by what he did, not what his father gave him, by what he did. The man went forward by what he did. So parents who are thinking, I am going to give what I have to my children, you are wasting your time, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It will be lost in one second. It doesn't work. You know this man stole blessing through the scheming of the mother. You remember Joseph? So where is the blessing? He walked, he almost died 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> to become Israel, he had to walk. Yeah. Not that your father bless you. He had to become Israel. 21 years. <laughs> 21 years. <laughs> he had to walk. Papa bless me. That's okay. Well, God bless whatever you do, whatever you do, it shall prosper. So you don't do nothing, forget it. Abraham blessed Isaac, not just for prayer, with all his inheritance. He gave gifts to all the other ones, but he gave the all that he had. And Isaac became a nation by what he did. The Philistines went to seek his peace. So he won't run over, overrun them. By what he did. Success is not a transferable virtue. Many big, big names around the world today went off when their time was over and all that they left squandered in no time. In no time. Teach your children to take responsibility. Yes. Will I ever ask how our grandchildren go to school? No. It's their parents' responsibility. How much are they paying? That's not my business forever till I die. Whether you are abroad or in broad, anywhere you are, you look after yourself. No one had had a dime added to his pay that is entitled to. For what? What are you going to do for them? Ask them what are they going to do for me? You should ask them, what are they planning to do for me? That's true. Don't put an adult baby on your lap. It's my son. Mother <laughs> Walun Jare. And this is the Martini Samapo. That's why I'm alive. Well, I know you're a baby, you be coming. 
と思う。<笑>ええ。But watch how you take the stage. You are about to take the central stage. Yeah. All your mockers will go into hiding. Yeah. Because God is about to add color to your life yeah. and bring out the virtues of glory that are embedded in your redemption. Yeah. Now, very quickly, serving God. It's a platform for assessing supernatural wisdom. And wisdom is the womb that bats exploits. Exploit is an offspring of wisdom. Serving God is a platform for assessing supernatural wisdom. An exploit is an offspring of wisdom. Matthew um, 13, verse 54. Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Mighty works that we call exploits, is an offspring of wisdom. And so all wisdom catapulted Joseph from the prison to the palace. Mighty works. The wisdom of this world is full of mighty words. You speak one thing, boo. Ah! That man so evil. <laughs> But God's wisdom is wisdom of mighty works. Now, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 12. We saw the might of that in it. He said, God has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. And has stretched forth the heavens by his discretion. Mighty works are products of the wisdom from above. Yes, and serving God brings you into partnership with Jesus. And he that works with the wise shall be wise. A company of fools shall be destroyed. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. That was not Peter. That is supernatural wisdom in manifestation. That was not Peter. When they saw the wisdom of God in display, they marveled, knowing that they were ignorant and unlearned men. Partnership with Jesus gives you and me access to wisdom from above Amen. that will always cause men to marvel. Wisdom from above that will always cause men to marvel. The wisdom of mighty works. Now quickly, when he sent them to go in Luke chapter 10, he sent them to go into a place where he himself will come. So they are in partnership. It was coming there. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. Now, Mark chapter 16, go toward the word and preach the word. And then he was walking with them, confirming the word with signs following his partnership. We are co laborers with God. That's what Paul said. We are co laborers. First Corinthians chapter 3 
and verse 9. We are co-laborers with God. So, serving his interest makes you a co-laborer with him. And um, Proverbs 13, 20, he that works with the wise shall be wise, a companion of fools shall be destroyed. That's one other dimension of success there's virtue that is in serving God in truth and in deed. Now, you can't be in a convoy with the president of a nation and be harassed by traffic police. Is it possible? Or by roadblock stops you? No. The company you are in allows you to throw here throughout his domain. As soon as you see the flag, uh, and it's your avowed enemy, but he has no choice. Because it's not your saluting him. He will lose his police place. <laughs> no, he has to salute you. So that's how all, all devils watch you try on and are helpless. <laughs> Amen. All devils just stand at attention, yeah? Mm. <laughs> because of the partnership you are into. Come on, give the Lord praise, everybody. <laughs> so being in partnership with Jesus is your access to unstoppable realm of breakthroughs. Unstoppable realm of breakthroughs. Unstoppable realm of breakthroughs. You won't say that off. In the name of Jesus. And I devoted time on this. Um, serving God is a platform for glory and honor for the redeemed. We spent some time on that earlier on. It and when the source is wise, and the wise shall inherit glory. You want to shame road away? Get involved in so many endeavors. Get involved in so many endeavors. Get involved in your passionate pursuit of souls to be established in the faith. Get involved. In, my God. There are people here today that shame will never be mentioned with your lineage again forever. By what you are committed to doing today. He that serves me dedicatedly, him will my father honor. If any man serve me, let him follow the system. If you serve me dedicatedly as a seed, my father is committed to honor you. John chapter 12. 24 to 26. It always works. Some outstanding biblical success stories that thrived on the wisdom from above and gain access to the glory and honor from heaven. The first one we're looking at is Job, and you know that already. No challenge, but triumph gloriously, restored colorfully at the end. By trading the secret of God, while others are trading business secrets, as I was in the days when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. The secret of God is superior to any other form of secret under heaven. Any. Whatever is from above, it's above all. 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 Whatever is from above is above what? All. And he became the greatest of all men in the East. He wasn't trading business techniques. He was trading covenant techniques. He was trading covenant techniques. 
and David, a diehard servant of God, became a national hero as a teenager, became the envy of the king as a teenager. This thing works. Today is our covenant day of marital breakthrough. And like I said, breakthrough is not your ambition. It's your birthright. Amen. The salt of the earth, the light of the world, is your birthright. birthright. You are redeemed as a breakthrough entity. Amen. So I decree marital breakthroughs for anyone here under any form of marital siege. For everyone under any form of marital spell, such as marital delays, just about to get married and everything is cut again. Every generational cause response for where you are in your marital life. Tensions, temperature, pressure, every day. The source of it, by the anointing of today, is cost. Amen. And you are living here liberated by the power of God. Amen. It's not good for a man to be alone and make a help made for him. So God knows what is good. He knows what is not good. He created us. And no good thing, I mean, every good thing is about writing Christ. Matthew 7, 11. How much we go give good things to them that ask him. If marriage is good and he'll give you any good thing that you demand of, then it's part of what he wants to give you. There are those who are married but they have not seen the goodness of marriage. Today marks a new dawn in your married life. Yeah. There are those who are on the line have been there for quite some time. Today, the chains that have held you bound, they are broken before your eyes today. Because your father is the one that sets men in families. Psalm 68 and verse 6. It said, God set the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are born, bound with chains. But the rebellious are dwelling dry land. God knows there are people that are bound with marital chains. I say he brings them out. It's his, it's, it's his will to bring them out of those captivities. So every captive of hell concerning marriage that makes you wake up in the morning and wish that the end has come, that makes you wake up in the morning and say, Jesus, come, come quickly, come quickly. Now, everything that connotes uncertainty in your married life comes to an end here today. <laughs> Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and we can in high places. They do not so good seed into their feet. How is it going to us? An enemy has done it. Whatever the enemy has done to defy, to corrupt, to molest anyone's marital enemy, that siege is over today. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. That daughter of Abraham believed that that prophetic word was for him. The same day, on arrival from the church, as he, she received that word, the old man was parking her low from wherever he went. And as she arrived at home trying to cook in the kitchen, the old man has arrived. Same day. Same day. Every day is God's day. The day you believe is your day. Every day is God's day. The day you believe is your day. I pray that you make today your day. With your faith. That you will make today your day. And it is your day. It is your day. Every siege of marital delay is destroyed today. 
Any agent of the devil that has vowed that you never get married, they go into silence today. Any diabolical power, satanic power, holding down your son or your daughter from getting married, that siege is shattered today. Remember, by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. By a divine privilege, and one of his prophets Amen. that God sent to bring people out Amen. of the dungeon and horror of the wicked. Yes. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, yes, Lord. whose I am and whom I serve, yes. the one who sent me, yes, yes, that yoke yes. on your marital destiny yes, is finally destroyed today. That you, on the marital destiny of your sons and your daughters, they are finally destroyed today. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Anyone set for marriage this year, under the sound of my voice, in this commission worldwide, is declared married. Amen. Gloriously married. Amen. Not mechanical marriage. No. Not arranged marriage. No. With the clear hand of God on it. Yes. That shall be the testimony of every such individual. Amen. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. The battle is over. Amen. 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 What to actualize your glorious marital destiny? Back to the same thing. Be born again and remain so. God's agenda is exclusive preserved of his sons and daughters who are members of his own household. Be born again and don't let the challenges of marriage push you to the side of the devil. Be born again and remain so. Don't put your hope on anything else other than your God. Or oh, the frustration continues. Be born again and remain so. He cannot stand a double delay. Be born again and remain so. And watch how he comes through for you, as he always does, as he always does, as he always does, as he always does. Except a man is born again, he cannot be a partaker of the blessings of the kingdom of God. And this is one of them. Be born again and remain so. Number two, stay in love with God. Don't let your circumstances be cloud you and separate between you and God. Stay in love with God. Stay in love with God. For eyes have not seen or ears heard what God has in store for them that love him. Stay in love with God. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Stay in love with God. Make this year your most spiritually robust year. As you keep engaging with every instruction from heaven, and God steps in to change your story. Yeah. Remain committed to kingdom advancement and divorce. For that is the platform upon which God adds all things that others are dying to get to us, including marriage, peace, Marriage, joy, and harmony, breakthrough in marriage, destruction of all marital yokes, behind marital delays and all that stuff. He adds those things to us. And for free. And when God adds, no devil can remove. Stay committed. Beware of pride. 
behind the tension, the temperatures and pressures in many homes today is pride from either side. Pride from either side. You should know I'm the husband of this. There is no contention and there's no election. So make yourself your husband, my husband, this man. Behind that temperature is you foiling it. You are foiling it, foiling it. And you say, I cast you out the devil. Satan is laughing. I didn't come to your house. Huh? See how they are telling like God. See how they are telling like this, man. <laughs> the time we are talking, uh, Satan is across a Atlantic. Somewhere else. He said, Can you see now? God, I'm just here. And he said, I'm the one generating temperature. Deliver me from them. They are like. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, allow Ephesians 5 23 to 30 lay hold of you. Take it as a seed and plant it and commit to it. You will enjoy peace and serenity. Peace like a river. No games. Beware of pride. It has thrown many, many decent people naked. Beware of pride. Beware of pride. Be the wife and the husband at the same time. And that's what we are trying to be. It's not normal. Husbands wake up and also win the respect of your spouses. Come on now. They mustn't be chasing after you for money for food that you eat. No. Learn it. Life, life, life. <laughs> People don't get respect until they earn it. They earn respect. Earn the respect of your spouse. For if a man provides not for his house, or the people of his own house, he has denied the faith, it's worse than an infidel. Well, there could be challenges, eh? Because you're partners, you're working together. That's not a problem. But to be doing Majai Jai all around town, it's not normal. You know Majai Jai? <laughs> it has no English interpretation. <laughs> I've been trying to, and I'm, I used to be an interpreter for, for an evangelist. Well, I can't get them up. Oh, Majai Jai. Oh, Majai Jai. Now watch me, you know I'm a local man. <laughs> I've never bought a piece of socks. I never bought for our children when they were growing up. I don't buy food. I don't know the price of any food. That's not my area. I need my time for everything. So we have a set budget that goes for running the house. And we are still in it. And the house runs like a hotel, but we are still in it. And my wife is a very efficient manager of those things. <laughs> But they want to buy bread, they are looking for you. It's not fear. It's not fear on your time. <laughs> <laughs> and then you start praying when they are coming. They say, okay, anytime you finish prayer. <laughs> Have <a budget. laughs> Praise the Lord. I told the person in charge of my account, I said, don't bring me anything to sign on Sunday morning. I don't have time to sign anything. Mm. Bring anything to sign for Sunday worship on Friday. Mm. The time is not there. It's that time now we can say, children, this is one error for you. <laughs> I have never done it. When they were growing up, their mother was in charge of their offerings, already budgeted. budgeted. Yeah. By the time you now go to town, you are now buying yam. <laughs> 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 
One day they said to me, they said, uh, price has gone up. I said, I didn't know what it was before. So I would like <laughs> When I was a bachelor, one woman was helping me to buy something. The way they insulted her, I felt so much for her. I said, that's how market is. <laughs> they, come on, carry, come and steal it. <laughs> you are not friends in it. <laughs> Praise God. Well, you know the good news? Every tension in every home goes off finally today. Yeah. And every miracle marriage results from this service will never know crisis. Amen. Every separation brought about by the workings of the devil, they are now restored. Yeah. This week shall be a week of commotion of testimony. Now, before the seventh anniversary of the wonder double visitation, you will hear news. Amen. That what you have waited for for years has finally happened. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks, everybody. Magnify Jesus. Celebrate him. Give him glory. Give him praise. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Now listen to me. No devil has power to resist the authority of your faith. This is the victory that will come to world, even our faith. How many have believed that marriage is good? How many believe that marriage is good? How many believe that every good thing belongs to us on demand? How many believe that faith is up to taking the leave of everything God says? How many believe that? If you will only believe all things are possible when you are believing, I see you settled gloriously. Yeah. I see you settled gloriously. Yeah. Don't ever meddle with any other source of expectation. My soul wait upon the Lord for thy expectation is from him. Wait only, only, only. Jesus, whatever you cannot do, let it remain undone. But it's up to what his word says. When you believe, he creates it. So I see peace, joy, harmony, restoration created for you. I see God bringing you to the one that has ordained for you in marriage for the foundation of the world. I see your marriage success as a testimony that will speak around the world. So shall it be. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Give him thanks and praise and glory. If you caught anything from the world today, Celebrate him for it. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Very quickly, you are here in this service and you're not born again yet. This is what we enjoy on this side of heaven. I'd like to pray with you and then. Life becomes a walkover for you. The devil will become no concern to you. And then you start enjoying the provisions of redemption. So wherever you are this morning, you want to be saved, you want your sins forgiven, please stand to your feet and I'll pray for you right there. God bless you. You want to be born again this morning, please stand to your feet. 
You want your sins forgiven today, please stand to your feet. You want Jesus to save your soul today, please stand to your feet. It's going to be the best decision you have ever made in your life. Amen. Not about going to church, it's about becoming a member of God's own family. So if you are there, you would like me to pray with you to be born again, please stand to your feet. And keep standing, please. I'll be praying for you in a moment. Now, there are also people here today that need to rededicate their life to Christ. Don't fake it. If you know you went off, come back. There's always room to return. You want to return back to your Savior today? You want to dedicate, it, dedicate your life to Jesus? Please stand to your feet. I'll pray with you at the same time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You want to dedicate your life to Jesus? Please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet wherever you are. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Now, please bow your heads, all of us who are standing, both for the first and second call. Lift up your right hand to heaven with your heads bowed and pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. And I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your help, I will serve you all through the days of my life. And by your help, I will make heaven at the end of my journey. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Please keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered till the day of his appearing. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. 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 You may please be seated. Um, please complete those slips and pass them on to the church officials that are around with you and we'll be in touch with you as helpers of your faith and your joy. Give us the privilege to do that. Amen. Now today is a monthly special anointing service. And I'd like you to take your bottles off. Place for all first timers here. The third Sunday of every month is a monthly special anointing service. Don't stand up here, just sit down. I'll show you seven things to expect as this oil comes on your head. Seven things to expect. All of them, with your faith, will find full blown manifestation today. It's your faith. It's to everyone according to his faith. Not according to what he hears, not according to what he understands, but according to what he believes from all that he hears and understands. He touched them. He said, I'm going to be according to your faith. It's not according to my touch. Yes. If I hold your hair, it doesn't matter. Without your faith, nothing drops. Nothing drops. Nothing drops. What are the virtues in that oil? I will take it and then we go. One, the yoke-breaking power of God is there. It's a mystery that humiliates, humiliates and silences all the forces of the wicked hovering around your life. It shall come to pass in that day. The, the burden of the wicked shall be taken from your shoulder, Isaiah 10, 27. And it's all from your neck, and you can destroy it because of the anointing. Mm. It shall come to pass in that day, not the following day. So the day is administered, is the day it speaks. Yes, sir. Ooh. Shall come to pass in that day. Ah, in that day. 
So just expect whatever connotes a yoke on your life, your family, your business, your career, on your marital destiny to be destroyed today. Amen. Faith will always secure heaven's attention for your desired intervention. Faith will always, always. Peter looked at that man and perceived that he had faith to be healed. Stand upright on your feet. Life, they were bringing that man down from the roof. Jesus saw their faith. Son, take off your bed. What are you doing here? Faith will always secure heaven's attention for your desired intervention. You can't move God without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to move God. For it that comes to God must believe that He is in the word of them that did is seeking. Believe it today that the yoke of sickness, the yoke of disease, the yoke of nightmares shall be destroyed in your life today. Yeah. What's in the oil? The healing power of God. What's in the healing power of God? Yeah. Nobody leaves this service with any trace of sickness or disease on his life. Yeah. Every terminal disease shall be terminated here today. Yeah. It gave them power. Mark 6, 7. And they went forth and preached everywhere and anointed with oil men that were sick and healed them. Verse 12 and 13. God's healing power is in the oil. Yes, sir. God's healing power is in the oil. 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 In the oil. And in the name of Jesus, your desired healing returns home with you as a testimony today. Yeah. What's in the way? The breakthrough power of God. Come and say the breakthrough power of God. Power. Say loud, the breakthrough power of God. In Isaiah chapter 61, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then you go to verse 4, and they shall build the old ways. They shall raise the former desolations. Amen. Amen. And they become major employers of labor. The breakthrough power of God is in the way. Now, let me tell you where I'm coming from. When they anointed David with oil, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. What came upon him? First Samuel 16, 13. Now, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And among the things he works is breakthroughs. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit and his Spirit went abroad. To all the country round about. My God, breakthrough power of God. God said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, Who's right and have hold him to subdue nation before him, and I will lose the lowest of kings. The breakthrough power of God is in the oil. Therefore, every breakdown experience comes to an end in anyone's life today. <laughs> Number three, the exemption power of God. Come on, say exemption. The exemption. Yeah. As they went from one nation to another, people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch no man anointed. They exempted. Yes, sir. Don't, don't die, it. don't try. It. Now, from today, no more assault of the wicked on your life. Yeah. You are living here with a seal of exemption over your life. Evil eye that set on you for evil goes blind. Amen. The exemption, power of God. What's in the oil? It's called the oil of joy and the oil of gladness. Now, that means joy unspeakable. Amen. It's one of the virtues in the oil. As this oil comes on your head, yes, Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 3. Uh, the oil of joy. And then Psalm 45 and verse 7. The oil of gladness above thy fellows. My God. So, so it, it, it destroys every air of depression. What is it? Now, in the name of Jesus, no one here will suffer depression anymore in his life.
Now, I'm telling you the true truth. I have not been sorry for myself once. I mean, I enjoy the attacks. It's part of how to develop muscles. Amen. Amen. It's a test of maturity. My God. I now go down because you insulted me. It's an opinion. All of joy. My wife was dying. I was full of joy. Ah, you're a wicked man. Is it where? It's not my problem. Is it where inside me? Oil of joy, oil of gladness. I've not seen one person ask me, what's wrong? Oil of joy. And then, oh, that is not the, that's your cup of tea. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, somebody who is not joyful can't drive the energy I'm driving. Mm. You better wake up and stop uh, formulating what doesn't work. There is oil of joy. It, it inoculates you with joy unspeakable. Yes. Full of glory. Joy unspeakable. Full of glory. That becomes your portion today. Amen. Amen. No more weeping behind closed doors. Amen. Until Hannah's joy returned. Her testimony never came. Hannah rose up and ate bread. And her continent was no more sad. This sadness you are carrying about is your greatest problem. He's tormenting your life without knowing. Yes. 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 Don't mind, Papa. He doesn't have. Uh, he doesn't have a problem. I don't. <laughs> I have Jesus. Amen. Problems have to be overcome, yeah. not to overcome you. Amen. You can't know the end of the battle and then be be, be down. Mm. No. I wrote a session in my upcoming biography, my share of challenges. The title of that chapter is My Share of Challenges. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Life is so interesting. He said, Be of good cheers. I have overcome the world. If you believe overcome, cheer up. Hallelujah. Cheer up. Hallelujah. By this anointing, I cause every root of depression. In anyone's life. Yeah. Every root of depression is caused in your life. Amen. Can I tell you what it does? It robs you of access to God's presence. Mm. Only the grateful, the thankful, the joyful can get there. Mm. Number two, it destroys your seed. God only receives cheerful seeds. So what it means? You can't assess God in prayer. You can't assess the world. But for we draw, we draw out of the ways of salvation. No access to prayer. No access to the world. Eh? Your seed wasted. Leave that thing alone. It doesn't add value. Depression erodes value. It never adds value. It never adds value. Jesus knowing the end. He was smiling on the cross. The end results are is that you get on top of it all. Amen. No matter what it may look like now, yes. you are getting on top of it all. Amen. And by the anointing today, God is taking you out of the valley. Amen. Toward the mountain top. Amen. Although the fruit may not blossom, there might not be fruit in the vine, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And the Lord will make my feet like I am speed and guide me upon my, upon my higher places. You are getting there. Yeah. That's how powerful joy is. I'd like you to receive consciously today the oil of joy yeah. and the oil of gladness. Yeah. It's a way maker. It's a pace setter. Come on out. That's the way it works. Give the Lord a big hand of prayer. <laughs> now stand to your feet, everybody. Take your bottles off. Satan is in trouble. His weakness has been exposed. Giants are made out of servants. Why are you arguing who will be the greatest? 
I'm in your midst as one that serves. And what the anointing does, among other things, to empower our still worship with steadfastness, continuity. Behold my servant. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall not fail nor be discouraged. So by this anointing, your still worship will become seamless. Yeah. I said to become seamless. Yeah. So it's the anointing for servant who empowers men to serve God to the end. To the end. To the end. Now look at all the things loaded into it. And they are all for you, for you and me for free. Now, this is ordained to be a forever mystery. It shall be a holy anointing on to me throughout your generations. Amen. Therefore, I declare the content of the bottles in your hand as the holy anointing oil. Amen. And as this oil comes on your head, every prophetic word from scriptures proclaimed shall find instant expressions in your life. Yeah. Many of us who come out of here are becoming a surprise to ourselves. Yeah. The things that you to bug you before will just disappear into the thing here. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I therefore cause every yoke of the wicked from off your life. Yeah. I decree God's healing power to sweep all over your life. Yeah. Now, receive the breakthrough power of God from this oil. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I release upon you the exemption power of God. Yeah. Your eyes shall not see evil anymore. Yeah. Your eyes shall not see evil anymore. Yeah. Your eyes shall not see evil anymore. Yeah. Whatever you may have lost, I decree the restoration power in the oil yeah. to be released upon your life. Yeah. After Saul was anointed, I said, the asses that you went after have been found. So by this anointing, whatever the enemy has robbed you of, shall be restored back to you. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. That is now the holy anointing oil. Yeah. Put a little of that on your fingertips and straight to your forehead. If your neighbor does not come along with his body to please assist him and begin to make your declarations for the manifestation of those powerful treasures that is in the oil. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Is done. The yokes are destroyed. Your breakthrough is here. Your seal of deception is established. Your restoration is here. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, precious name we are praying. Amen. Whatever your mouth has declared, your hand will handle. Amen. The weak is declared your week of testimony. Amen. Every terminal disease is terminated. Amen. 
Every siege of the wicked is over. Brand new day for you. Now, finally, we take a shot of the oil as we do by revelation. And whatever does not belong will be swept out of your system. Amen. Your organs that may not be performing accurately or perfectly will be fully restored. Every chaff of the wicked will be born with fire. And you'll be set free forever. All that believe in the efficacy of this ministry take a shot of the oil and glorify the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Cover your bottles. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Your faith has made it happen. Your faith has made it happen. Your faith has made it happen. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks as we close in this service. You shall be singing and dancing all through this year. There shall be no occasion for mourning in your household. Lift up your two hands, everyone, and thank God for sin again the last Sunday of the month of March. Give him glory and praise. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Thank you for protection. Thank you for provision. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks again. The world celebrates Mother's Day all around today. Amen. Can I have you say with me, thank God for the blessing of mothers. Say it like you mean it. You know, without a mother, you will not be here. Is anybody who mothered himself? Come and pray. All the mothers in church this morning and all the will-be mothers, congratulations. For everyone born of a woman, I'd like you to lift up your two hands and give God thanks for the blessing of mothers. Give God thanks for the blessings of mothers. Thank God for the blessing of motherhood. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. Heavenly Father, thank you for a day like this when the world celebrates the gift of motherhood. Now, I decree your blessings to come to rest upon our mothers in this church. All the mothers, the will be mothers, let your blessings be upon them. And make them a blessing indeed to their offspring. Let their lives be such an example to them. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Bless the mothers in this commission with strength. Yeah. Bless them with wisdom. Yeah. Keep them spiritually active. Yeah. Spiritually alive. Yeah. Let every one of them be a blessing and not a burden. Yeah. Now grant them long life. Let them remain fruitful in old age. Yeah. 
Let them remain value adding members of the church. Amen. Value adding citizens of the earth. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Help me congratulate all the mothers, the will be mothers around you with a warm handshake of smiles. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now, lift up your two hands and ask God to speak to you today. Ask God to speak to you today. Lord, I want to hear from you. You sent a word into Jacob, he turned his life around forever. Let your word locate me this morning. And it turned my life around forever. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, speak to each one of us specifically today. Amen. Let no one live here without something tangible to take away. Amen. Lord, restore the joy of everyone in this service. Amen. By your word, rewrite the story of everyone. And so shall it be Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please be seated. Genesis 49 and verse 25. Now we're talking about Joseph. Please wind back a bit. Genesis 49. But his power abode in strength. Now, can we start from 22, please? Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall, no dry season. How? The archers have sorely gripped him. They hated him and shot at him. But his bow abode in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is a shepherd, the stone of Israel. Verse 25. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee. By the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above. Blessings of the deep that light under. Blessings of the breast and of the womb motherly blessings. All of those things were working on Joseph's life that made him indestructible. Honor thy father and thy mother. First commandment of the law which is accompanied by, by a blessing that it may be well with you and you may prolong your life upon the earth. The blessing of the womb and of the breast. The blessings. It doesn't matter what your skills are. Without a blessing, life is a dry land. It's a blessing that makes life fruitful and meaningful. Even God, it's your honor in Him that entitles you to His blessings. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of thy armies. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy vats shall burst out with new wine and oil. I was 20 years old when I pulled out a blessing from my grandmother. I presented her a little furniture, two seats, one central table, and she looked at me you shall be great. I said, just have your breakfast on this. You shall be great. Too many rascals today, sir. Don't care nothing. We were flying across the Atlantic one day, I remember. The blessings proclaimed. I went to the restroom at the airplane and wept. 
this I'm in Jamaica, I'm in Australia, it doesn't make nothing. You can go around the world and come back with nothing. People don't know these things. Now, honor your mother specially today. Kind words, kind gifts when you get home. <laughs> hey man, don't be here, bro. It's wasteful to be rascally. Wasteful. My father on my mother's end said, my wife's end said, um, what people do for their children, you have done for us. Whatever children do for their parents in your time, they will do for you. They buy cars for their parents, you bought for us. They build houses, you build for us. If they are giving place out, they only your time. That's what the children will give to you. You don't know what blessing means, sir. It means everything. I've never received a letter from any of our children asking for help. <laughs> Not one, sir. Not one. Not one till tomorrow. Somebody say, your life will take a new shape. Wisdom is better than strength. That's what I mean. You should know that by now. He taught me very early. I don't know what I did for him. He just liked me. He taught me things very early. To place value on whatever thing is valuable to you. Amen. Amen. Place value. Whatever is valuable to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, the prophetic focus for the month is you are redeemed for the topmost top. But it starts from the bottom. It starts from where? The bottom. The journey to the topmost top starts from the bottom. If you watch those folks that climb Kilimanjaro, for instance, I've tried to watch that. It's one step, one calculated step. But from the bottom, yes, sir. not from the middle. The nowadays youths, they hate the bottom. <laughs> And they want to get to the top. I don't know how they want to get there. That's why they go into drugs. Computers count until they catch them and jail them. You better let him go, Gil. okay. You start climbing the tree from the bottom. Now, studio, if you are there, just give them a picture of the bottom of where we are coming from as a church. Just pictures, motionless pictures. Now, roll it. We have just seven clips of it. We've been teaching all along, so let's pass instructions. Amen. Now, that is the church in the beginning. That beginning is not month one. It's not man too. Nobody can carry camera there because there was nobody to take. That's white wood bench. That's communion service around July. After nine months. Go ahead. There is nothing out there today that I didn't start down there yesterday. Did you see that pew? That's like what they used to sell cigarettes. <laughs> That's powerful ministry, worldwide. 
Now, that's the butcher. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, go forward very fast. Now, that's the church in Kaduna. Now, that's the office block. That one you see, the office block. This is the main church. One of the most fascinating facilities in the entire state today. Now, that is Lagos, where we started from. Did you see that? You see that rundown story view? That's when we exploded, because we have left benches at this time. That's Amen. And that's Lagos Church before we left. Go ahead. You see crowd outside everywhere. Amen. That's the inside of the sanctuary then. And now that's the church in Kapana, uh, right Joba area. Now that's Kenan. He saw step. Yes, How was your attendance? January 84, 6. February 84. Heavens opened 14. March, we jumped up. Average attendance 22. Average attendance for 1984, we started in 83, was 81. Average attendance for the year. When I go out for three hours today, I get near 300 people. Enjoy starting from the beginning. All this grigri won't get you anywhere. <laughs> it won't get you anywhere. When we planted our first five churches, 1987, total income of the church was 573,000. How much? 573,000. For the year, sir. For the year. Very wasteful generation. Just squandering things anyhow. We saw the first one million worldwide as a ministry in 1988. 19 what? 88. Because now keep singing, redeem for the topmost top, hallelujah. Redeem for the topmost top. Amen. <laughs> Did they come and take a teaching job? No. Redeem for the topmost top. <laughs> come and work in the factory, no. I already have a factory in the spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yet we have never borrowed absolute contentment with each face. Absolute contentment. Is borrowing a sin? No, it's a weight. Lay aside every weight and every sin. If I borrow from you and I can't pay, you want to come and stay at the entrance of the church? And as the ushers collect off in the college, I let me take my money first. <laughs> Jesus was born as a baby. He grew to become a child. He now became an adolescent at 12 and became a son at 30. The Almighty that came in form of a man. But now you want to start as a man. Every baby starts, every child starts as a baby. Start there. Start there. I'm speaking first and foremost this morning to this upcoming generals of the new generation. You have to start from the start. <laughs> you enjoy starting from the start. If you see the condition today, that's where it started from. Total income of Kaduna Church, 
18,600 in 1984 a year. 1985, 55,000, I think it's following the rhythm. 85, 55. Next time, I prepared as hard as I do today for meetings. No dull moment. You saw my coat? Three piece home. You don't know three piece coat? You need to know that one. One day I was coughing blood. My wife said, We should go home. I said, No. If it is the last one I will do before Jesus comes, I will do it. It's not bread and butter to collate Christianity. Wake up, fasten your seatbelt, and move. Some won't start from the beginning, so they are still struggling to have a start. They won't start from the beginning, never. They borrow from everywhere, from enemies, from friends. From... So their life is just choked. They won't start from the beginning. There are many businesses you can do in this, many business you can do in this country without any, uh, is the current affair they call them? Corporate affairs. Legally too. Do you need corporate affairs to say yam? Before what? <laughs> to say pamoe? No. You already personal affair. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for money to register. Register what? You have capital? Develop capital. Yes, sir. I know one of my daughters in the house, her business was moving food from here to my degree. Big time business today. Big time. You don't need corporate affairs, this corporate affairs, you don't need nothing. <laughs> it's to carry food people want to eat. Would they ask you whether you have certificates before they buy food? <laughs> no. A young man came in from the US in Kaduna, masters in mechanical engineering waited for job, waited for job, no. He went to the market and found out how much they are selling palm oil in Kaduna market. He happened to be from Edo. Went to Edo to find out how much, ah, this is money. So the remaining money with him, he started moving palm oil. He bought a house in the GRA. I mean, that is no corporate affairs. <laughs> but life, life is also, some, my God, Master's degree in mechanical engineering. <laughs> you know me, palm oil? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, you do palm onga. Palm onga. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hey, is something making sense to someone here? People are looking for, we teach them English. You have a first degree, very good one in English, and you are waking up and sleeping every night. Just put simple English class, extra moral classes. You live your life. But by the time you finish sleeping, you can't remember any English again. <laughs> first year, second year, you are sleeping. That's not life. You say, why is it? I just, I, I, I think God is asking me to go into motor dealership. Ah, okay. You will soon be selling plane. <laughs> Start from where you are. That is the Abrahamic covenant step. Say from the place where you are, look not towards. All you see is coming, but start from where you are. Start from where you are. The journey to the topmost top is open and free. It only takes the wisdom of the covenant to get there. Exploring success secrets but success virtues in kingdom stewardship. Exploring success virtues in kingdom stewardship. 
we discover from scriptures that revelation is a mystery behind all turnaround stories in scriptures. Revelation, revelation, revelation. As we behold them as in a glass, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. Changes are effected through revelation. Revelation, light from scriptures. Applied revelation can turn a little one to a thousand and a small one to a great nation. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, Arise and shine because your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is written upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and grow down the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. The glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles will come to your light. Dramatic change of story experience. And their kings will bring up your rise. Rise. And verse 8, and they shall begin to say, Who are these that fly as a cloud? By the power of light. Though you are forsaken and nobody thinks about you, that anything can come out of your life, you shall become an eternal excellency, the joy of many generations. And verse 22, a little one shall become a thousand, and a small one is strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in this time. When you start walking in the light of scriptures, in all that you do, that's where you are ending. Can you come down on the volume, please? That's why we say here often, what we know does not change us, but what we do with what we know. 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 A young man in Liberia, not long after the war, was jobless. Then he heard me say, in that little booklet called Wisdom Diary on Diligence, he caught a statement there where he said, living without working is dying without knowing. His eyes popped open. He had only 100 Liberian dollar on his hand, so he went and bought brush for polishing shoes and bought polish and began a shoe shiny business. He rose from there. Privileged to be one of the first story buildings in Morovia. A blessing to the kingdom of God in this church. He began from that light. Living without walking is dying without knowing. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 18. He said, through slothfulness, the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands, the house drops through. Picked it from there. There's so much in the kingdom that forbids anyone being idle. Before you get a material job in your hand and give the spiritual task, it will facilitate the speedy opening of the next phase of your life. Speedy. Speedy. Somebody jobless is not praying, you know, my prayer is not witnessing, it's not doing anything. I mean, what, life, what kind of life? What kind of life? All those my short, short teaching experiences, they are out of no damn time. No damn time. No damn time. No 
Apply revelation. It's what changes the stories of believers. Apply revelation. No right note, very full note, you know. Apply it. Apply revelation. Just coming alive in ministry, 1982, the Lord said to me, See, there a man that's diligent in this business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me, man. He says, It's not your connection that determines where you find yourself tomorrow. It's how much we invest in your assignment that determines it. Somebody's story is changing. Amen. One thing I know and I want to tell you is that an army of giants on this earth will rise in this commission. Amen. People of global reference. Amen. People of global reference. Amen. People raised by God. Yes. People raised by following God. Yes. People raised by serving God. They will rise in this church. Yeah. There will be boys and girls, yeah. men and women, yeah. old and young. Yeah. You can choose to enlist in that army. Today, yeah. it will impact on the works of your hand. Yeah. It will impact on your health. Yeah. It will impact on your family. Yeah. It will impact on your children. Yeah. Now, the Lord said to me in 1984, Please let me know when my time is over. We can stop. You have been hearing me all your life, so. <laughs> I was in this room 28, verse 1. My son, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. Now, please know, God never forces his agenda on anybody. Amen. I mean, you, I mean, you can be saved through an angel coming with an apostle. I know it doesn't matter. God never forces his plan into anyone's life. He said, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. I said, yes, Lord, I am. He said, then whatever he tell you to do, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. He showed me that 1984. I declared it in church. Man, I found my way to the top. Of. Don't be looking at me and see what is this man doing. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. So obeying God became a natural delight, the more, the more, the more. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. Now, and what I say to one, I say to what? To all. So everybody here listening to me, God is asking me to tell you, there is a place reserved for you on the topmost top, if you are interested. If you are interested. And if you are let that book become your eternal guide. Let whatever instructions are contained in that book matter to you. Engage with it with utmost delight. Now, men and brethren, there is not one dime from any foreign nation in what we are doing here. Interestingly, too, not from our church, by our policy. We invest our resources in those nations in developing the work of God in that nations. Relax. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. That's the cheapest way to the top. It's not jumping from east to west, west to north. That's not how to get there. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. You do something else, that's your problem. Let me jump the queue quickly. There's a man by name David. He gave a testimony in First Samuel. Is it First Samuel? First Chronicles 28 and verse 4. God chose the tribe of Judah to be king. And then he said, um, How be it? First Chronicles 28 and verse 4, he says something very interesting there. He said, How be it the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, he, the house of my father. And among the sons of my father, he liked me. He what? 
you must hit that line this year. Yeah. Elect me to make me king over all Israel. How did he win the like? How did Joseph, I mean, uh, David win that like of God, that favor from God? First Chronicles 29 and verse 3. And now, because of my affection for the house of my God, <laughs> his affection for God won him the favor of God. My God, his love for God. I've given all that of my own private proper good, my proper good, to demonstrate my affection for God so God liked me. Psalm 102, verse 13. Eh? He said, Thou shalt arise, I have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants, take pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the dust thereof. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. Fearful favor because of your unperturbed pleasure in the things of the kingdom. <laughs> On part of pleasure. Yes, sir. Unrestricted pleasure. Unreserved pleasure. You are looking for a boy that loves God madly. I'm one of them. Is a holy wedlock. I can't come out of it. me. His own was, he liked them. He likes me. God likes me. When you win his like, he enthrones you. God likes me because I take on the secret pleasure in the affairs of his kingdom. He likes me, David said, to make me king over all of Israel. That's the only way to matter in the agenda of the rise of giants. That's the only way to matter. No one in your generation will miss that covenant platform yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. So serving God is a platform for supernatural enthronement. We saw that clearly in the story of David. He took his life in his hand and confronted Goliath for defiling the army of the living God. Who is this nonsense empty barrel? Let me die and watch this continue. That's why God liked him. God's favor will wipe away all your struggles. When his favor hits, your struggles end. When God's favor hits, man's struggles end. You are going to hit that dimension of favor this year. They were arguing who would be the greatest. The disciples of Christ in Luke 22 verse 25 to 27. And Jesus said, you don't get it right. Let me show you how to emerge the hair. The kings of the Gentiles exercised lordship over them, and they that exercised authority upon them are called the benefactors. Albeit, but, but ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. Now, verse 27, for whither is greater, he that seated at me, or he that serveth, it's not he that sitteth at meeting your own concept. 
but I am among you as he that serveth. The greatest name that ever walked the planet Earth served his way there. Served his way there. Then he went on 28. He had did that and continued with me in my temptations. And I will appoint to you a kingdom, as my father has appointed me, <laughs> that we may sit on 12 thrones, 12 thrones in heaven. My God, 12 thrones in heaven. <laughs> now, Judas had all of that. But it wasn't a partaker of it. You will partake of this. You will partake of this. Amen. You will partake of this. Amen. So it is serving God and his interest that enthrones believers. Not sitting tight, watching and writing. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom is what enthrones a believer. Serving God. And the interest of his kingdom is what enthrones a believer. And you can't serve him without his taking note of it. Yes, sir. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro in all the earth. No, see, I don't think God saw me. God sees you anywhere you are. To show himself strong. He's seeing everything at the same time and responding accordingly. Yes, all the earth. Yes, all the earth. Today's your day. Yeah. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro in all the earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him. I found David my servant, not in town, in the bush. And it's the same way he said it to them forever. No matter where you are, he will find you. He will. He found him and enthroned him. His elder brothers were throwing their chairs in town. What of that boy are you hearing from him? I hope the sheep are okay. When they say, bring your sons, Eli said, they're all here. They don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. God said, I have not chosen him. Eliab came. He looked so kingly. Some said, ah, this is the king. He said, stop that. That's his slave. No, it's not the way you pose. It's how well you serve. David was serving and keeping his father's sheep. God found him. And you are serving and keeping your heavenly father's sheep. God will find you. Amen. God will find you. Amen. You don't need to beg him. That's his job. <laughs> I have found David my son with my holy oil. I have anointed him. God will find you. God will find you. I said God will find you. Amen. Now, we, it's a choice to serve God. Choose ye this day. It's not a gift. It's a choice. But choosing to serve him is one. Serving him is another. It takes passion. For your situation will be empowered for steadfastness. What do I call it? Passion. It takes passion for anybody's still worship to be empowered for steadfastness. It takes passion. Passion is a natural virtue. People are passionate about several things. Paul was so passionate about the Jewish religion. He wasn't born again, so passion is not, I mean, uh, Galatians chapter one, verse 14. He was more zealous than his fellows in his father's religion. So passion is a natural phenomenon. It's inside people. When you are saved, you can now redirect your passion to your God. It will make a world of difference. Somebody's soul is changing. Yeah. But let me tell you this, sir. This is very clear statement from scriptures. Only those who are faithfully serving their God we ever qualify for enthronement. Only those who are faithfully serving. Ski can get you somewhere, thank God for it, but it can't keep you there. Can get you somewhere, but it can't keep you there. Now you have a lot of rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. But serving God keeps you there. Serving God does what? Keeps you 
It gets you there quickly and keeps you there permanently. You don't stop, nobody can drop you. Nobody can. The attack of the enemy is zero. Israel is my son and my father. Let him go. Or I kill your son because he must go. He will clear every devil off your path to ensure your safety, your security at all times. Please sign in. There's so much lifting virtue in kingdom stewardship. So much. Abraham, my servant. Moses, the servant of the Lord. Job, there's no one like this Job. Africa, my servant Job, the biggest businessman in town. My servant Job, the greatest businessman in the entire world of those days. Through serving God, through serving God, you are the next testimony. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? And then we have the example of Daniel. We are all very familiar with him. Is that God whom thou servest continually, continually, able to deliver you from the lions? Thy God whom thou servest. Even the wicked king knew that he was serving God continually. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice. Nebuchadnezzar said, I mean, unto on, on Daniel. And the king said, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? He will deliver you from any trap of the wicked when you are genuinely serving him. Forget about those nonsense. He will deliver you from all of them. You won't even know they exist. You will not even know that they exist. Praise God. Praise God. When did I pray against the enemy not to torment me last? The enemy get away. He knows how to get away. He knows he doesn't belong to that environment. He knows. <laughs> Baba T.L. Osborne shared a very humbling word with us. The only days when my wife's head was under attack in the U.S., she went, he went to the house. And then um, he now said, uh, the Lord showed him how the devil came around the house area, and one of the demons was trying to enter the house. He says, hey, stop that. I want you. Don't go near the place. Why well, there was busy doing all that devilish things. He right? saw so, another one trying to get said, what? Get out. He said, the attack will come twice, but it will have no effect. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. There are no go areas for the devil, and he knows. Have you ever seen a madman run into fire? No. He's mad though, but not to the point of fire. <laughs> you are serving him, he surrounds with the wall of fire. Yes. Oh, witches, oh, they warn themselves. Yes. Don't come near that place. Yes. Don't come near. You know what Satan said? Have you not built a wall around him, around his house, and all that he has on every side? Serving God qualifies you for a wall around your house. Evil will never know your dwelling place again. Yeah. And it's not block wall, it's wall of fire. I will be to her a wall of fire and the glory in the midst of her. Satan is a beast. There is no beast that does not recognize the authority of fire. Amen. It's an evil beast. So you don't need to pray for, you know, we have all these different categories of snakes. Hmm? Python. When Python sees fire, it just bend. No way. I'm not as Python as this one. <laughs> hey man, this is a stronger Python. Let me go my way safely. Every evil beast just reverse when they come near you, anything that has to do with you. The benefit of serving God, he built a wall around you. So as you are rising and they are getting angry, it doesn't matter. Whoa, come near. Come, come. Come and get fried. Come, you will fry. Come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody story is changing. Amen. How many desire for God to like them? Yes, so you love him. Yes, and then he will like you. <laughs> love him in truth. And he will like you. 
Love him in truth and he will like you. Love him in truth and he will like you. We have not begged for one thing in this commission 40 years plus. Thank Joe. Emma Bino, please, now. Relax. It's your turn to be enthroned. Yeah. And no devil can stop it. Yeah. It's your turn to be enthroned. Yeah. And no devil can stop it. Yeah. Jesus took upon himself the form of a servant. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has also highly exalted him. It's the same process. The form of a servant first. Obedience to validate it. And then you are highly exalted in return. Can I hear you say, God does not need my support to be God. I need him to fulfill my destiny. He doesn't need me for anything. But I need him for everything. That will change your perspective forever. That will change your perspective forever. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Now, all politicians worldwide, whether first world, second world, third world, or fourth world, Everyone needs some human support to get there and to stay there. God needs nobody's support to be God. I am that I am. You are too small to support me is a risk. To, to want to support me is a risk. If I fall on you, where will you be? No. My, my God, no, no. Say it and convince yourself. God does not need my support. <laughs> to be God. So don't come to church and do as if we are his supporters. <laughs> Who are you supporting God? <laughs> Erodeable. <Ball. laughs> we are supporting God. <laughs> the Lord said to me, I've not chosen you because you are better than anybody else. I've only given you a privilege. Should you abuse it, there are better hundreds at the door. You know, God knows how to humble people in the assignment. He told me at the beginning, at the beginning, so I knew that I'm not in this. He can throw me out any second. So I want to jealously guard my privilege. People can, many people can say that in town, that God does not need my support. You, but that's the truth. He doesn't need your support. He doesn't need my support. He doesn't need our support to be God. It's God whether you support him or disappoint him. God forever. God eternally. Come and give the Lord a big hand of prayer. Amen. Well, just four things and then we pray. By redemption, you are ordained for a life of next levels. The path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Now, put the word just and call it justified. The path of the justified, the redeemed of the Lord, is as a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. We have been justified by his blood. So we are the one he's talking about. So our adventure on earth is ordained to be from glory to glory. Amen. Shining brighter and brighter till the perfect day when Jesus comes. Now, therefore, from today, you will never know the meaning of stagnation again. Amen. No one here will suffer the plague of stagnation again. Amen. Your business, your career, your children, the works of your hand, my God, nothing will suffer stagnation anymore in your life. God hates to see his children go in cycles. He said, you have gone around this mountain long enough. I'm not comfortable. If your child is repeating classes, you are not comfortable. You are not comfortable. The same year, you know, next year again, the same class, the year after the same class. 
Kendo day. Uh, so God cannot be comfortable when we are the same spot. Therefore, from now, every year in your life will be another leap. Therefore, remember not the former things. God is starting a new thing in your life today. So next level is not your ambition, it's your birthright. Next level is not your ambition, it's your birthright. And you are getting there. I say you are getting there. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Romans 5 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from the wrath through him. We are the justified is talking about in Proverbs 4, 18. And that's you. Just like you saw the church grow from that wonderful status where we began from and to where we are by grace today, that's how your life will keep changing level. But we must possess a next level mentality to realize this. For as a man thinks in his heart, so you see. Next level's mentality. When we first came here, we had a brick, I mean, a concrete wall where we thought our property was going to end. But then, God showed up and threw us out there with thousands of acres of property. We had to break the concrete wall to create a way to the enlargement. God has no ceiling on our destiny. God, take off the limits of your life. God has no ceilings on our destiny. He showed me that at the base of this ministry there will be 50,000 seat sanctuary. That's okay. Now, he said, go ahead and do this. And showed that he did. He said, you are taking my project to that place. I will not have come there. So it's his project. Yes, sir. 100,000 seat is his project. Amen. Amen. The only one he showed me was a face. Yes, so it's moved to the next phase. That's not the last one we're going to do. Amen. 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 If you think so, that you, are, you, are, you should think right. Yes. That's not the last one. <laughs> you say, what's the last, last I one? I don't know. I didn't know this one when we came here. I didn't know it. It shows you as you go. No ceilings on your destiny. So hanging around the same spot is not safe for you. It's not your heritage. No. I caused the plague of stagnation on every area of anyone's life in this service. No more. I said no more. No more. Before the half of this year, you will know that the yoke of stagnation has been broken. To experiencing continuous change of level, number one, we must begin to see every instruction of scriptures as an examination. Which one must pass to make it to the next class in school? Every instruction, see it as an examination, which you must pass to move to the next class. It came to pass after this thing that God did test Abraham. Abraham wrote a test of sacrifice before God moved him to the next level. Every instruction is a test. Without passing the test, you don't have a testimony. Every instruction from the Lord to you is a test. Without passing the test, you can't have a testimony. You must pass the test to have a testimony. Seek you first the kingdom of God is a test. You pass it, 
then all this will start being added to you face by face, face by face. You don't pass it, nothing will be added. You pray kingdom advancement player as a service platform. He sees it in secret, he rewards you openly. You go after souls, he rescues you from shame and reproach. Amen. I mean, every instruction is a test. And without passing the test, you don't have a testimony. Okay, this is the place. It's a test. Canaan cannot be the place. It's lost. It's going to nowhere. But it's a test. You fail it, you'll be at the same point. You'll be suffering frustration, agitation, lawsuit and everything. For failing the test. Failing the test. Now, every winner should make sure they have 10 souls. It's a test. Yes, sir. I don't care. You have failed the test. Now, whatever belongs to those who do it, you have lost out on it. Everything. If you don't start a test, you'll be praying funny prayers. They say, right exam, you are praying. Is that the way to pass? No, sir. Oh, Father, to do what? Right exam, you say you are not interested. Your fervent prayer and the prayer of your father and your prophet and papa won't change anything. Yes, sir. You must pass the test on your own. Yes, sir. Your father won't write the exam for you. Yes, sir. If they catch him, the two. <laughs> you must pass the test. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I hope you still like me after this. <laughs> because Papa, just pray for us, pray for us. It's not pray for you. You must pass the test. Pray for you, you won't move from 100 level to 200 level. You pass the test. Praise God. <laughs> when engaging with instructions of Scripture becomes one's lifestyle, such individuals continue to experience Change of levels as a lifestyle. You are just moving. You didn't hear to my voice. I will say to her above all nations. I'll be changing your levels little by little, little by little, until you come above all nations of the earth. Let it become your lifestyle. Enjoy obey God's instructions. For blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delights himself greatly in his commandment. Psalm 112 and verse 1. He said. His seed also shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. What and shall be in his house? And his righteousness endures forever. Let it become the delight of your soul. Now, there are people in this church, and I mean it, who have never paid tithe in their life. And they are always fasting for financial breakthrough. Stop punishing yourself. It's impossible to command financial breakthrough without being a tighter and a liberal soul. Moti I've worked with him for some time. It's impossible. It's a waste of energy. Oh, God, all the ones attacking me. Nobody's attacking you. <laughs> your being off the covenant platform is your greatest attack. Your greatest attack, sir. Your greatest When God said to me, 1987, our total income was 520 something thousand in a month, in a year, sorry. He said, start typing the income of the church. This is one of the most prosperous church institutions on the earth today. One of the most prosperous, by the grace of God, one of the most prosperous church institutions on the earth today. One of the most prosperous. One of the most prosperous. I came back from a journey and the Lord said to me, sow the seed of the blessing you receive on this trip to your mentor. And I said, sir, guess what? He put it back in my hand. He said, I put this back in your hand today. And from today, your hand will never know dryness. God doesn't know what to give him, sir. It's we who need it. We have never needed to look for dollar to buy in this world for anything, not even on this project. Uluwao. Amen. It's a test. 
it's a test. Now you do it. God, never, never. Say something else. One of the seeds we used in planting those churches in 87 was what the Lord told me, give me that car. And I, with a smile, smile, not grin, I told my wife, I said, go just, I said, praise the Lord, because we are equally mad. <laughs> <laughs> On my way going home, the Lord said to me, my son David, if it is no one to be rich, it's too late. A million book from you. Not that you told me. Every instruction is a test. Now, in case you can't hear from God directly, you can hear from his word. Do what his word says. Not I wish I can hear from God like Papa. No. You can hear from God from his word. Is, is he Papa told you to pay tight? <laughs> Until you start doing what he says to everybody, he won't be telling you anything private. Okay, for what reason? What is there for everybody to do, you didn't do? He will now call you for a confidential talk on what basis. <laughs> you jump at what he says for everyone to do first. Yes, sir. I should better leave you so we can go to the next service. <laughs> Praise God. He that has yes. <laughs> but from now as you align with the world, no devil can get you stagnated again. <laughs> you believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. We must continue to serve God and the of his kingdom as a lifestyle. He came back, he saw what he did. You, went, you, you gained 10 talents more, half authority over 10 cities. And he left again. He's coming back again to change their level, if they remain faithful. So your level will never stop changing. Yeah. Now listen, I said your own level will never stop changing. Yeah. As you maintain the path of obedience, you keep changing level from glory to glory. Stand to your feet. Amen. The will always, forever, no matter what, keep rejoicing in the Lord. No matter what, because we come in little by little, keep rejoicing in the Lord. Although the victory may not blossom yet. There might not be fruit in the vine. But I will rejoice. He will make my feel like I speak and get me up upon my high places. That's the way God behaves. Keep rejoicing. Complainers don't have a future. Mormonas are going nowhere. Keep celebrating God. Keep celebrating God. We were living in the church building, I mean church office. One toilet for the entire church. We were a happy family. Happy. Was that where you were living before? No, no, no. We had our own apartment, a three bedroom house, and all that stuff. Now we have only one room, one passage, a sitting room. That's where everybody passes through. One toilet. My God. What? Happy family. People who come to your home know that we are living there. But that's how we live with our family. Keep rejoicing. You want to change level? Keep rejoicing. All this looking around, look at my friend, they are built houses. Go and collect it. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh God. God will change your story. Yeah. Everything that makes you cast your head down is over today. Yeah. Lift up your two hands. And sign in for this continuous change of level. Sign in for the continuous change of level. Sign in for the continuous change of level by your raw obedience to God and His instructions. Give Him glory and praise. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Quickly get seated, please. Before the prophetic blessings, and we start going, again, the usual thing you hear. You are not part of the system until you are born again. An unborn child does not need next level. 
which next level? Where is he going? No, it's permanent level. Until a child is born, it does not require next level. It cannot grow beyond the space available inside the belly. You are here, you want to be part of this glorious army that God is raising around the world, not only in this church, in all the churches of Christ. My God, and you want to make heaven at the end of your journey, so you can only, you know, not just bless here, but bless to heaven. All you need is Jesus to forgive your sins. Wherever you are, you like me to pray with you to be born again and be part of this great kingdom of God, of Christ. Stand to your feet, please. And I'll pray with you in a moment. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else is getting up to join us. Join us quickly. It's your turn for a new dawn. It's your turn for a new beginning. It's your turn for a new dawn. It's your turn for a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are also people that need to dedicate their lives to Christ, want to dedicate your life to Jesus today. Um, maybe there was a challenge and there was a disconnect between you and your Heavenly Father. You want to return back to Him. By dedicating your life, please stand to your feet. I'll pray with you at the same time. You want to dedicate your life to Jesus and have a brand new beginning. Please stand to your feet. God bless you as you do. God bless you as you do. Many more are getting up now. Wherever you are, get up quickly. And then we pray. Amen. Please bow your heads. Everyone standing up, both for the first and second call. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this simple prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I will serve you by your grace all the days of my life. I make heaven at the end of my journey in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, keep your hands up. In the name of Jesus, be blessed and remain blessed. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all the source of the enemy. You will make this journey to the end. You will enjoy the beauty of redemption on the earth and make it to eternity in heaven. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Shall we all rise to our feet? Please, the people just prayed with, make sure you fill up your forms and uh, you pass them on to the church officials around with you. We want to be in touch with you and be helpers of your joy and your faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. You have come to where stagnation does not survive. It doesn't survive here. Not even COVID-19 could get us told. Everybody has cleared the way for us in this commission. Therefore, from today, as you line up with God's instructions, nobody else will get you stagnated again. Somebody came here today without knowing what to eat next. But in the name of Jesus, within your four weeks of being here, favor will hit you. Somebody's challenged about where to live. You have been giving quick notice several times. Maybe they're even waiting for you after service. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, the one that dwells in our midst here, I decree God's favor to rewrite your story. Yeah. One of such fellows will come out of his own house in one year time. Yeah. Your business shall not suffer stagnation anymore. Your careers will no longer suffer any crash. Your children will not keep repeating classes. It shall be stories of progress forever. 
I pray that today will mark a new dawn in your life. Everyone under the sound of my voice, God is changing your level. Your obedience to God is changing your story. Your loving God is writing your story. There are many people that God likes in this church. He will add you to the list. Men and women who are in favor with God. We have an army of them in this church. God will add you to that story. I decree favor in your home. No more tensions. In Jesus' precious name. Now, very importantly, we are entering to the month of April. Our resurrection month. Let's start right. Let's start great. I want to invite everyone to be part of the spiritual week of emphasis. In the name of Jesus. And be part. Okay, the upper week. Now, we'll be part of the empowerment summit that's coming up on Saturday in the name of Jesus. And Sunday we declare what the month stands for and what the 40 days post-resurrection season of infallible proofs stand for. The period ahead of you is ordained for complete turnaround in all areas of our life. Don't miss that for anything. Lift up your two hands. And give God thanks, everybody. Give him thanks. Thank you.